Okay, hey guys, Shop Talk Podcast, episode 27. Uh, big special guest in studio here. Uh, drove all the way from Colorado just for this. Uh, Wes Selby, how's it going? Not too bad. Tired from the drive from getting all the way here for this, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you drove, uh, you came to Minnesota, you're dropping a sled off at Christian Brothers? Yeah, I uh, was planning on coming back out after this Sioux for racing, but then uh, had an issue with my wrist and wasn't able to come back out, so then just needed to come back and get some stuff and drop some stuff off, and then went and seen Roger and trying to see some other people if we have time. And every trip, you never have enough time when you're out here. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't care what you – you could plan a month and you'd still run out of time. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you just come home for the – or just come back for the weekend, try, try to do as much as you can, and then get back to Colorado. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, just like you guys – I mean, it's getting to where I'll start digging, excavating out there, like the farming out here. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of kind of running out of time for that, too. I was like, oh, I better just go and do it before I do. And the next weekend we have, uh, there, I shouldn't say we, but there's another hill climb that I'm going to go to in Utah. Um, so go do that and then uh, hopefully start digging right after that. And then there's one more in California. So I don't know. Hopefully they'll have that one, and I'll probably go to that one, too. I don't know. It's kind of hard not to, I guess, but. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, you should have came back and did the snow cross at Duluth. Uh, I wanted to, but I <laughs> I haven't rode a snow cross sled for like four years, and I thought about it, and then my wrist is pretty sore still, no. so I was – is one of those. I actually hit up that uh, Corey Thien, and he's like, God, look, uh, Bobby Page is riding that sled that you could ride, so I was like, oh, that, sign, that makes it easier. Yeah. Though, <laughs> but he uh, – so it, it would be fun. I mean, they, I'm sure you – did you guys watch the – Snow cross? Yeah, I watched like, it a little bit. Yep. I did not. No. Looked like they had a better track than they've had all year. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for way. sure. Mm-hmm. It was an actual track with multiple ups, up, uphills and downhills, so it was, yep. the it was 30, definitely interesting. 30-plus class looks sweet. It was huge. Yeah, Earl Reamer. Oh, yeah. I know. I couldn't believe I seen it. He was out there again. On yeah. a skidoo, but still cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still cool on a skidoo. <laughs> <laughs> the Dorns are cool. They ride skidoos. Wes yeah. rides skidoo, too. Yeah, so. okay. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Skidoo's taking over. Yeah, they, they're def- in snowcross for sure. They yeah. have since 2019. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of, that's we were talking, me and Roger were watching in a little bit, and it's like, it's pretty wild, like, how it goes through waves, different brands and everything, and, like, mm-hmm. even the players, guys, they, there's not a ton of them riding, or I shouldn't say there's not a ton of them riding, but Skidoo's pretty dominant in the snowcross right yeah, now. Yeah, so it's like sport, pro light, pro there. It's, it's Skidoo for snowcross. Yeah. But... Huh, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming here though. Yeah, because we sure. had we had you on the phone after Jackson Hole Hill climb. It was it was pretty cool to have you on the phone. So yeah. since you came back here, it's pretty sweet to get you here. So yeah, it's always cooler to have in, in studio. In yeah. studio, it's awesome. Yeah, oh for sure. Conversations go better and more fluid and everything. And yep, yeah, I appreciate it. It's fun. I listen to your guys' stuff too. It's interesting to see different opinions or people <laughs> like <laughs> and like you never. I shouldn't say never, but you like just don't talk to people sometimes when you're at the races that you could and it's cool to see their opinions on everything or what they're doing or what they're up to too yeah like one one guy had told brady that he's like uh after listening to brian's he's like i've never heard brian talk that much no so no i feel like everyone said that (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's funny he's got a lot of stories too i mean you could listen to that guy for hours yeah but but uh uh no no vince call today so uh hit up vs3 suspension for all your dirt bike needs <laughs> you guys go riding dirt bikes yesterday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You guys yeah, were all riding or I don't ride. You're not no, riding. No. Them, no, just me and Kyle and Dad and our buddy Toria were up there. It was they had a lot of a lot of people up there yesterday cuz it was first open practice of the year. Yep. So it was the damn wind though. I was yeah. gonna say it's mm-hmm. kind of windy mm-hmm. to be riding moto. It was sketchy. It was. <laughs> <laughs> the one the one big the one big triple was the worst because the wind was pushing you. So like I was hitting it in the middle and you'd like you'd veer all the way to the edge of the landing. Mm-hmm. So it was, I had a pretty good line picked out on it. So I was doing it every time. But I was watching it and you would hit the middle, but you'd like hit it sideways. So you just <laughs> I thought you were like aiming for the soft spot or something. <laughs> like like you were going way too hard. I was like, no, that's just his line. Yeah, because <laughs> like, well, I, I was prepping for the wind. Yeah, like you're kind of going into the wind almost and then letting it take you. Mm-hmm. That's but, fun. So, Wes, uh, you're kind of the jack-all-trades. Like, you've kind of done it all. Like, 
even I was looking on your page today just for some research, even drag racing. You even did some drag racing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of crazy. Like, I was thinking about that the other day, and not even just snowmobiles, but dirt bikes or uh, jet skis or, like, the drag racing thing. Uh, there was a, a guy at Jolstead Motorsports. He sponsored me for a long time, or he's still a good buddy, but his buddy, Scott Thran, had some of them rail cars and, like, drag cars. And, like, uh, I don't know how it came about, but Mark bought one. And then uh, just went and ra- that Bandemir drag strip in Denver. So we went down there and just raced a- quite a bit that summer. And it's pretty fun. Like, it's different. I don't know. I don't know. It. I mean, those cars are fast, too. But it's just like after you do it so many times, I. Yeah. It didn't give me the rush. Like, I think if you were driving a top fuel car, it'd be gnarly. <laughs> but, like, the car I was riding, and I think it was like six or seven seconds and a quarter. And it was like, I can't remember exactly, but it was fast. But it was like after you do it. 20 times you're just like okay like let's turn the let's let this thing go now because you're limited by the limiter box like Mm -hmm. so you basically all you do like in the first couple times i did it i didn't do it right at all but like basically you just hold the buttons and then you let go of the button when you want and then you just you already have your foot to the throttle so like the first couple times i did it i just held the buttons and i tried to push my foot even harder <laughs> and then i'm like but then you let go of the button and so it's kind of like it was a learning curve for sure but like it uh is fun i mean like i said i've done a lot of stuff and it's i don't know what was be my i think snowmobiles and motorcycles obviously is the favorite mm-hmm. but uh it's been a good drive for sure yeah i did like because i've known you've done you've done a lot of stuff but to see dragsters on there i didn't yeah. know about mm-hmm. that one so no. yeah it's pretty fun um but so when growing up in Colorado, did you always have dirt bikes and snowmobiles and stuff growing up? Like, is that how it started? Yeah, my dad, he was a, like, he was a real good guy on flat track motorcycles in the 70s. And then he got hurt. But then when he had us, uh, my brother and stuff, we just had a, my mom lives there now again, actually. But we had a um, big backyard and I had a little yz or that wasn't a yz but it was like one of them old yamaha 60s with like the metal tanks and shit Mm -hmm. (laughs) and dual shocks and like i would ride that thing around the backyard like i had a just like a dirt path my mom hated it because she's like super she loves like gardens and grass (laughs) you're just out there ripping it up i would just and my dad would always and they told me they're like you got to stay on the trail because so i had this little path just burned around the backyard and i would ride every day as much as i could or whenever i could and uh, we didn't go to, like, tracks or so much until, I mean, I was probably in, like, fourth grade or something. My dad was always working, like, he was always gone working. Like, mm. he was an aircraft mechanic for a while, and mm. um, he wasn't there to, like, take me in motor racing. And I, I mean, I didn't start motor racing until I was, like, in, like, 60s, basically. Oh, like, really? when I got a KX60, and some of those kids, they grow up doing it from there when they're, yeah like on 50s or whatever but i never had that stuff and my little brother he was into it my older brother he wasn't really much he kind of was into it but like he ran my we had an xr80 or 100 for my brother and he ran it in the fence one day in the backyard and <laughs> I think that, like, my dad got all fired up at him probably and like that kind of burned him out maybe i don't know but <laughs> it happens yeah, yeah it was uh-huh. yeah. all it takes is one crash sometimes and <laughs> oh, you're sure. just done <laughs> yeah. yeah it was so it was fun and then uh when we moved to the mountains uh, in like nine or something, fourth grade. And then that's kind of, we started going to motocross races and stuff a bunch. And it's, uh, I mean, the cool thing about Denver, especially after I turned 16, but like there was, like there's the national track. And then there was, I don't know how many, 10 tracks you could ride. And like four or five of them, you could ride a prep track motocross mon- or Tuesday through Friday. And then you would race every weekend. Really? Mm. So like, Full prep, uh, groomed and tilled, yeah. watered. Like it was. How how close to you were? Uh, how close to like Lakewood were you? Uh, so that was the closest because it was the first one when you go over the hill. But it is like an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half from my oh, house. Oh really? Oh. So geez. like I'd go there all the time. Like when I was a kid. <laughs> like it, and they groomed. I think it was Wednesdays and Fridays, and then every day on the weekend. So we would go there all the time. Uh, but that tracks. I mean, that's always been my favorite track, yeah. I think, but. It does the, like, when we're watching it on this TV, when the pro guys are there, does it do it justice on, like, how much elevation changes are, are actually there? Or? I mean, there's, 
there's some big jumps and like elevation changes are pretty good there but like the the difference between like pro day and like normal race days there is they peak up it's like any track they peak up the jumps and oh, then they dig yeah. it down deep like yep. the ruts are gnarly on the pro days there but that track's fun like and it's pretty like there's usually quite a bit of people riding there yeah. every day almost but so it's fun uh because that's, that's what you kind of were going towards when you kind of, like, first started. You were kind of going towards pro motocross, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, Weren't I mean, you? Kind of, like? There was the, I mean, definitely the chance to do that. But it's kind of, I mean, the kids that are doing that stuff, they're homeschooling at that point. And, like, I'd go, uh, Donnie Hansen, he was, and Josh Hansen, they were in Colorado. So I'd go spend a bunch of time with them in the summer riding and doing all that stuff. And that guy went to amateur nationals in Texas and all this stuff. And I kind of like number 100, Josh Hansen. Yeah. Really? Yeah, nice. he was, no, cool. he's, yeah, he was, I mean, when he turned 16, he went and got his deal and then he was gone. And then I kind of stayed going with Donnie and stuff, but, uh, <laughs> that's was, sweet. Yeah. Like he was, he's gnarly like that. Like the, the talent that guy has or still has, he's nuts. Yeah. He but, has one of the coolest like riding styles you could have on yeah. just his flow. Like yep. it's unreal. Yeah, and I, I mean, so we did a lot of that, and I was still young, <laughs> though. Like, I was younger than him, and I kind of, I don't know. My dad never really raced motocross, so, like, he didn't know the stuff or, like, techniques. Like, he could watch and tell me, like, hey, you need to do this or whatever, but he didn't know all the stuff. Plus, I think even you guys see it with your dads or whatever. If your dad tells you something, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. But then if a dude different, like a pro guy tells mm -hmm. you or anyone, they're like, oh, yeah, I need to do this now. So it's like. I think my dad seen that too. Like, hey, we you need to get some training and stuff, or did that, and then that helped out a lot. I mean, uh, I was riding pretty like when before I kind of quit focusing on motorcycles as much. Like, I was going pretty good. Like, it's fun and just kind of was to the point too. Like, even when I graduated, it was like, well, do we keep? You only can do so much, mm -hmm. and like the amount of money you're spending and time and everything. I kind of used to travel all winter like we would especially back then there was regionals out here everywhere and like you could ride every weekend and race every weekend from Duluth until after Geneva yeah so it was like summer came around and I'm like oh, I wanted to be a like have fun with my friends and stuff too so <laughs> like you're just like oh, I'm gonna just hang out and go boating and I mean we'd go boating all the time and all all that kind of stuff so yeah. it was uh you kind of I don't know we had fun and it, we rode a lot of dirt bikes but and I still ride all the time, but it's, I kind of stepped back from it a little bit. It was just, uh, one of those things. It was fun though. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of fast dudes on dirt bikes, so it's pretty hard to make it in that. Yeah. I think too. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, last weekend we had, uh, Eli Tomac's practice bike mechanic on yep. last weekend. So that was pretty cool. And he said, yeah, when Tomac was one time, just fourth gear pin through some rollers, it's just, how is he doing it? Oh, those, <laughs> yeah. They, you ride on the track with those dudes at the same time. And I don't care who, like, who you are. Even if you're a top twenty guy, those guys still like the Tomac or them. They come by you, and you're just like, it's not even comparable. Like, <laughs> no, they're you're to go the level they go is unreal. Yeah, like, there's there's many levels to motocross. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean a local guy around, and I'm just using examples, but like a local guy around here could be winning the pro class, and he won't even make the main mm -hmm. you know, outdoors, especially. But uh, so it's. It's been fun though. It's cool. I mean, the uh, the most recent one you did, you did the one twenty five All Star race at Lakewood, didn't you? Yeah, we did. I did that a couple times. Uh, I didn't really have my bike running as good. Like, there's some kids and stuff. Like, their dad spent some money. Like, they're <laughs> fucking <laughs> cheater bikes. Like, <laughs> like it, I would go around the corners and pass them, and then like you get in the straightaway and they'd pass you back. And then I didn't really ride enough before that. I kind of I got arm pump bad and like. <laughs> It was kind of one of those things, like, I built the bike, and I was like, ah, this would be fun. But then when I was doing it, I'm like, I should have prepared a little more. <laughs> like, and then the ruts were deep, like, so it was fun, but it was, uh, I was going to do it some more, but then they quit doing it because of the I, COVID or whatever. The yep. heck. So I sold that 125, and then, I, well, I bought, I had a Yamaha that I built up and, like, spent a pretty good amount of money on. But then I didn't have it running dialed, and then I, after the race, I got it dialed in, like, way better. But then I bought a uh, what did I buy a Husky one and it had a 150 kit on it. Yeah. So I was like, I was kind of want to race that, but I would have had to legally, you would have had to change the cylinder and stuff. So it was, uh, 
legally. Those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, I, those guys, like, their bikes are pretty, those kids, I mean, I don't know if they're not legal or not. Yeah. I think a lot of people got busted for cheating there, but it's, <laughs> it is what it is. If I had a kid, I'd put them on a cheater bike. Yeah. <laughs> Try everything, <laughs> yeah, you know, to you almost cheat. Yeah. Like, if you know he's not going to win, then you probably just be like, here you go, have at it. Yeah. He's a 144. It yeah. might help you. Yeah. yeah. Shit, I'd put him on a 167 if it's that. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it is fun. Those bikes are fun. And I like the two strokes. I mean, I didn't really ride two strokes after super minis very much. So, mm. like, that's kind of when the four stroke Yamaha came out and my dad bought me all that stuff. And we had some pretty gnarly uh, four stroke bikes. Like, I mean, the. It was cool. Like, our bike was pretty much a factory bike, but it didn't have the factory suspension. But, it, like, we had carbon fiber air box and titanium everything and magnesium <laughs> hubs. Like, oh, my dad was... Damn. My dad never, like, he was cool. Like, he... Or he still is. But, like, if I ever wanted or if he saw me trying and putting in the work, like, he spent whatever. And, I mean, he spent a lot of money on stuff. But it was pretty cool to see that. I was looking through pictures last winter or sometime when I was cleaning my house out and, like... I was looking at pictures of those bikes. I'll send them to you sometime. But it's like, mm-hmm. you look at the stuff, and it's like, it's a full-on factory bike without the full suspension. Yeah. Like, it was pretty cool. Mm. But uh, it was fun. Mm. Yeah, that's, your bikes are cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> and the bikes now, I mean, they're totally, they're... Kyle's still on an old RM250. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love two strokes. <laughs> Yeah, they're fun. I mean, no, no change in that. So now this quad talk. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we were talking about YFZs. I'm fucking Googling banshees. <laughs> banshees, is, of course, that's the I first thing you go for. Stroke, yeah. you know? They sound good. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Banshees are badass. Yeah. I'd be the only one out there just fucking oh, yeah. tapped. <laughs> I don't know how good at handling it would do on the track, but I don't care. Good. Just as long as it sounds good. <laughs> Those things are like riding a fool. Like I. When I was a kid, I thought I was going to be cool and buy a Banshee. Or my dad, I'm like, I want to buy a Banshee. It'll be more like a snowmobile. He's like, ah, I don't think so. Like, that's not a good idea. But then he got me one, and I rode that thing. And th- like, I put all the bullshit on it, like Nerf bars and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, we went to a track, and I rode it at a race one time. And I'm like, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Like, it was not fun. Like, it was sounded cool, but I yeah. it was like, I'd just go ride around in the snow and the sand dunes making noise. But yeah. <laughs> Those things to race are wild. Like, yeah. The guys that haul ass on those are like, if you think about the old three wheelers, like those yeah. 250R guys, yeah. can you, I can't imagine riding one of those and jumping them. Like, we were talking that. about yeah. that. Yeah. That's got to be the most gnarly shit. Oh, there's a reason they <laughs> banned them. them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those dudes are more of a man than I'll ever be. Yeah. But, or just dumber. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at Banshees and I was like, they're way too fucking narrow. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, they sound they sound good though. Yeah, yeah. but I don't know. They're pretty wild. I don't know if I would want to race one of those ever. No, again. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get a Banshee, Kyle. But well, then I got a two-stroke swap, fucking YFZ or something. Uh, two, uh, <laughs> like a Honda 250R. Yeah, a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, Quadzilla. My had, yeah, my dad had one of those back in like '85, '86. That'd be cool. They had those 500 Suzuki's. Yeah, you could get one of those yeah. tanks, those Quadzillas or whatever the hell <laughs> yeah. they call them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be a wild ride. Sure I mean, if I'm going to spend fucking $10,000 on a quad, why not make it sweet, you know? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we work up, we come up with. Yeah. They still race four-wheelers up here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a fuck. At, at Brooks on Saturday, there There's was a couple probably 20 plus. Really? 20 quads, yeah. Yeah. I was wow. Like 15, to tw- <clears throat> 15 to 20 quads. Yeah. It looked like a blast. Cause there and there's a hand, there's a couple guys that haul ass on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. I remember when I was up here a bunch. There was a couple guys. They they went around. They're pretty good. I think Langus's cousin or something was one of them back then. Oh yep, yeah he, yeah he does more freestyle stuff now. Does I he? think yeah, yep. Tricks are for kids. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then we can start getting into freestyle, Gunner. <laughs> oh, <God>. there you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'll stick to. No, I don't mind jumping a dirt bike or a quad, but. Not snowmobiles or nothing. Oh, yeah. I'll stay flat. Yeah, you've tried to do a whip, and it's like, you're not doing a whip, Gunner. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, On a dirt bike, I can throw a little bit of a whip. Not Just not point your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it started that's, out. That's, that's what, what I started do. Out yeah. Yeah. Like, like, God, I feel like I'm yeah. just laying this it's, thing sideways. Yeah, it's, it's like, so no, you're not. out there, and then yeah. you look at a picture, you just got your butt hanging off. Yeah. Yeah. Handlebars are turned. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, fuck, I look like an idiot. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. In New York, I was fucking... 
scrubbing the shit out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I would just turn my bars over. You, yeah, you thought you were scrubbing everything. <laughs> yeah. Bikes straight up and down the bars are just turning. Uh, that's funny. You're leaning off a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's funny. So Wes, when did it when did it change from like kind of dirt bikes, like motocross racing to snowmobile racing, uh, or were you kind of doing both at the same time there for a little stretch, or did it just change? Yeah, I mean, when I so I started, I never even rode a snowmobile until ninety eight, and then uh, we moved to the mountains, and uh, like we moved up there so my dad could start his drywall business, and then my grandparents lived up there, so then we were going to be there in the winter, so my dad bought us some old ass sleds, like I think I had a uh safari 377 like old as shit <laughs> and my <laughs> my older brother had an old jag like a 340 and like those things are slow down here but in the mountains they're really slow and uh, <laughs> my little brother he was actually the first one to get a new sled like he got a 440 fan skidoo mm. 98 and uh i had seen there was gonna be a like we were racing motocross not too serious at the time but i was like in the 80 classes or whatever and my dad, uh, there was like a, a flyer. I remember there's a flyer in town and they were going to have a snowmobile race in Fraser. And, uh, so my dad checked into it. I told my dad, I'm like, I want to go race this race. You know, like mm -hmm. we might as well, we're in the, we're in the winter time. Like we're going to, we should do that. And he's like, okay, well ask your brother, your little brother, if he can ride your sled. So I asked him, obviously he's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, he, so we went there and it was, uh, like a snow cross and that's, and I ended up winning the junior class that I raced and like no one knew, like, I mean, I wore like a puffy snow ski coat and like motocross pants, like just looked like a total goober. Like, oh yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. Like, uh, but ended up winning. And then like, after that, I just, we were hooked and kept racing. They had a couple races there that winter. And then like, um, Dennis Dermis, he was, that's when he was racing them full time. Like oh, really? and he came home and I remember, watching him and Lynn Felker and a bunch of these other, like there was a bunch of pro dudes that, especially out West, like in the Colorado and Idaho and stuff, they could come out and make mains. No problem out here at Snowcross. And mm -hmm. like, I just remember watching them and like trying to do what they were doing. And then, uh, the second race I ever went to the Dennis Dermis there and he had like his full blown mod from back here from the nationals. And like, mm -hmm. it was like a, he was on Polaris that year. I think that's when he had switched back, but, I was over there just staring at his sled. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you're at a motocross national and you're like just staring at their bikes and they're yeah. like, you know, they're watching you, but you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're just, I don't know, just in awe about the thing. And uh, he, it was after the race day and like the tracks were all, we were all done racing. And Dennis is like, Hey, what, uh, what's your name? You know? And I told him and stuff and he didn't know me or, and then he's like, well, did you race today? Or yeah. And I told him and he's like, yeah, I won the class or whatever. And uh, he's like, Oh, you must be, be pretty good i'm like no nah. like i just started yada yada and he's laughing he's like well if you want to ride that mod sled you can ride it and i'm like really and he's like yeah ask your dad <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like if your dad says you can ride it i don't give a shit he's like go get your helmet and ride that thing and i'm like and i was just, i've always been like skinny kid or whatever but like i was smaller and uh my dad's like i told my dad i'm like yo this guy said i could ride a snowmobile like, <laughs> and it's fast and loud like it says loud twin pipes and shit and i'm like like, can I ride it? And he's like, oh, sure. He's like, don't wreck it. And then, uh, so I rode it around there until I was out of gas. <laughs> like, it's funny. Like, and then, uh, Dennis, like, he's kind of a family friend after that. He, he would always send me like autographed pictures and stuff. And like, and then I, uh, I was just hooked after that. Like we went to all those races and then we went to like West Yellowstone that year. The first year I raced, we went to West Yellowstone and that's like when Morgan was first starting. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. like my dad told me, I remember like I was waiting to race and I was playing in the snow like every other kid would. And my dad's like, hey, you need to come over here and watch this guy race. And that's when like Tucker and Kirk and all of them were racing. And he says, watch that, watch that Tucker and that Morgan there. That's how you got to ride a snowmill if you want to win. And so I watched him. And then after that, that's like, I, we were always out west still, and then we didn't start coming back. Like, we switched to, uh, what did we, do? we switched to Polaris. Dennis got me on Polaris in, like, 2000, mm -hmm. and then that's when we started coming to some nationals and stuff and, like, this and uh, junior classes and stuff. But, like, it, uh, I remember that. Like, my dad was always like, you got to ride like that guy. And I didn't know anything. <laughs> like, you're young. You don't yeah. know. Yeah, anything. how old are you when you're doing this? 
I was like, so I was 98. So, I mean, I was probably sixth grade or something or something. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> so, like, so, yeah, you're, you're young. young. Like, yeah. That's back in the day. Like, all the, you'd go to them races and there was more people there at those races than there is nationals now. So, mm-hmm. like, it was just nuts. And, like, even our Colorado circuit, like, they had two circuits. I mean, they had 20 pros probably each race. Like, and down the line, they had a bunch of people. So, like, and some of those guys had raced there forever and some, like, Lynn Felker, he would come back here. Those guys would come back here and do cross country, like the 500 and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he would, like, he knew Brian Deardall pretty good. And that dude had, like, these big hands. Like, he, if he shake mm-hmm. your hand, he's like, wrap around your hand <laughs> twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's so intimidating. Like, just <laughs> yep. six foot six. Like, I don't know how tall he is, but he's a big guy. But, uh, so that was pretty, that's kind of how I got into it. And then, uh, I mean, we were racing motocross in the summer. And I wasn't super, I didn't go, that good when i was on small bikes like i was i don't know and then when i got onto the four stroke stuff like i kind of when it clicked and i started moving pretty good but um i mean i kind of when i graduated is when my dad was like you know you got to figure out what you're gonna do or like (laughs) he's like you can't do it all if you're gonna it's easy to be average at a couple things than it is to be good at one thing yeah so Mm -hmm. that's kind of when i decided i was like well i'm gonna go back racing snowmobiles and then that was like go three and then uh, I, I went and lived with Dermis for a couple winters there. And I kind of, like, even that, uh, that's when they were having hill cross at the X Games and, like, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And they were having qualifiers in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So I'd go, I went to those and then qualified for X Games and hill cross. And then the next year, like, this uh, guy, he came to town and, like, took me out in a snow cross race the weekend before X Games and broke my wrist and, like, mm. <laughs> just it was just like some I had a lot of injuries when I was a kid like even high school like I had I mean I just weird shit like I I think I was in uh ninth or tenth grade and I we were at a race up in Grand Lake and I was riding back to town I told my dad he had this badass 800 players like mountain sled for the day and like twin pipes and shit and I'm like I'd we're riding around there and then the trail goes to Grand Lake and then the, my dad was driving the truck and trailer and I Told my dad, I'm like, I want to ride your sled back. Like, all I ever wanted to do is ride, just like you guys. Like, yeah. all you ever wanted to do, you could ride until you're out of blue in the face. <laughs> yep. And uh, I remember telling my dad, I'm like, I want to ride to town on that sled, and I'll meet you at the dealership. And he's like, okay, like, whatever. Well, the fucking road parallels the uh, snowmobile trail, and I slid out into the road, and I got T-boned by a Ford Bronco and broke my femurs, and like femurs yeah like it was not good <laughs> plural like, that's when i and that's my first time i broke a bone after that it's like every year once or twice i'd break something like i don't know what it's just weird like co- like collarbones or shoulder blades or like just dumb stuff and like i think that's it was kind of frustrating because like i would get to the point where i was fast and like be racing like there's other guys fast that were coming to national like steve martin and all these other guys and mm-hmm. we would we were hauling butt and like we were racing each other hard like all the time like we weren't and i kind of like i'd get hurt and then they'd keep going racing so it yeah. was like i kind of just kept building that base up mm-hmm. yeah like I, you'd get healthy and then you'd get going again and now yeah but it was and then that's kind of after i graduated i was like ah, i kind of just to do the snowmill thing and like have some fun in the summer too but it uh their bikes are fun like i I love dirt bikes. I mean, enduro stuff or like I raced some flat track a couple of years ago and did that for a couple of summers and that was fun. I just did that to do with my dad because he, yeah. never, he wanted to go to the races, but, uh, yeah, it looked like you fully restored like an old Yamaha and even you were racing like a new KTM too, weren't you? Yeah. Like I, so well, you, were, you were all in. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> that, it's funny cause that old Yamaha, my, it was my dad's and that thing got stolen when he was younger in Colorado and they, like, he was going to work drywall and he's like driving by some dude's house in Boulder and he's like looking at all the bikes and he told his buddy, he's like, I think that's my fucking bike back there. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy's like, no way. So he's like, yeah, I think it's my bike. And the guy wasn't home. And this is like in the, it's probably in the early eighties. So like, that's a whole different deal. So my dad oh, went yeah. in his yard and he's like, that's my fucking bike. So he called the cops, cops came and got it. Well, that bike, I remember like as a kid, that bike and they, the guy that stole it, like, spray-painted it, and he probably raced it, but he ran the hell out of it till it was junk. And then uh, that bike sat in my dad's garage ever since then until, like, whatever year it was I fixed it up. I 
I uh, came to Colorado, and that's when I was working at Cat, and I was like, I'm going to fix that bike up and then, like, give it back to my dad, like a memory oh, sure. piece, you know. Mm-hmm. So I had, I went to Colorado, and I st- kind of stole it from him. <laughs> <laughs> like he, And I didn't tell him. Well, then, like, he never goes in this shed. Well, he just happens to go in that shed, like, two days after I left town. <laughs> and he's like, I'm, I was in Island Park, and he's like, what? Kind of called me, and he's like, you need to call me back right now. Left me a message, and I'm like, <laughs> So I call him back, and then he's like, somebody stole my fucking bike again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, ah. so I didn't know if I should tell him or not. But then I'm like, ah, I better tell him. So I told him. I'm like, yeah, I, I brought it because I'm going to fix it up. So then I summer, <laughs> I think, or it was like that spring, I think. I fixed it up and restored it. And then uh, Chad, that is whenever I was getting painted at home, it's HCP. He repainted mm-hmm. the, I got like new fenders and stuff and fixed it all up. And then, uh. I went to Colorado with, what did I do? I had to take a snowmobile to Colorado for a buddy for a mountain sled. And uh, I loaded that bike up and I was driving to Colorado. And then there's a local Colorado circuit. And I'm like, I'm like, gosh, shit, they're racing tomorrow. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I was I just, and I'm like, and I brought my gear with me. So I'm like, I called my dad. I'm like, hey, let's go to this flat track race in Denver. And he's like, I'm busy working and I'm like no let's fucking go like it'll be fun to watch like let's go hang out and do that so we went there and I had all my gear and I've never rode a flat track bike in my life and I'm like (laughs) I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do here like I I rode it up and down the road a couple times and I'm like I'm like oh shit like what am I getting myself into didn't have a steel shoe or nothing so we went there and then like I think I raced it in the vintage class or something and like Got like third or something. I don't know. It was fun, but like my dad, when my <laughs> dad showed up, he's like, "Whoa, what the hell?" Like, that's awesome. <laughs> so it was pretty, it was pretty fun. And then, like I think, it, when I was living in Minnesota, still, I'd go back there like a couple times a summer and just race for fun. And mm-hmm. and then uh, when I moved back there, I bought a KTM four fifty, and then we have some other ones that are like TT five hundred bikes. Mm-hmm. Like, and I actually like riding them better than the new bike because they're just smooth and consistent but like if you're going to go to a national you got to have a 450 and yeah. plus i thought i was like well i'll buy that 450 for practicing and stuff and i got going pretty good like i could do it was fun two years there i did that all summer and then uh i just got so busy with my business i haven't done it much since but we have all the bikes still like, oh really yeah oh. like <laughs> that's and i'm like i sold the ktm because i was like if i did it again i'd probably maybe do it on a different one or i just ride those old ones but them things are kind of like riding an old mod sled or something like you're just like ah hopefully it don't blow up oh sure mm-hmm. and then you can't get parts for them yeah mm-hmm. but they handle good like i'd rather i feel more comfortable i can jump on one of those compared to like that motocross bike i had with that was set up for flat track but i could jump on those old bikes and just be comfortable like mm-hmm. yeah so kind of like, kind of like these old sleds for ice racing almost mm-hmm. it's like it's yeah. almost made for ice yeah. racing yeah. how low it is yeah, yeah like yeah. they don't they just smooth and consistent mm-hmm. and like that's how those bikes were so that's that's fun uh but that's kind of, I got into that stuff, and I don't know. It, their bikes are fun. I, I've had a good time riding. Yeah. <laughs> when you stole your dad's bike back, <laughs> did it run? Like, no. was it, and so, like, he walked into his shed, like, someone took my bike and doesn't even run. Like, who would steal that bike? Yeah. No, like, <laughs> that was my first thought. Like, did it even run? No, he, I mean, it. he never did anything with it. When he, after he got it back from that guy, it just sat in his garage, like, when we were in Denver, because he was, the thing is, he couldn't go racing because he <laughs> messed up his back when he was younger. So then uh, it's like, well, he probably just figured, well, if I go fixing it, I'm going to try to race it. And he actually, we had him race it at uh, one of those flat tracks. But he, I mean, he's older and stuff, and, like, his body's used up. But <laughs> he had fun, but he was, like, it was funny because I was in the same one of the same classes. It was, like, a vintage class, and I was on another one. And he was racing around there, and then I, I think I – got tangled with some dude on the start and yard sailed and my dad's like <laughs> probably in full panic watching <laughs> what the hell and then i ended up winning after we restarted but it was just funny i'm like at least i felt bad lapping my dad <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> i bet, I bet. <laughs> feel a little weird yeah i'm like oh don't turn over this way yeah, yeah. Like, we're coming but no, no, it's fun so you mentioned that hill cross uh was that the hill cross slide you just bought yeah yeah okay. that's uh so Kyle wanted to get yeah, into that. Yeah, that's like my, my favorite machine. I didn't know if you raced that one like Snowcross or, or yep. what the deal was there. Yeah, so that was my Snowcross sled that year, and then we 136'd it. And then 
it has a 797 and everything in it. Yeah. Like, it's a full, like, for that day and era. Like, it doesn't have all titanium bolts, but it has, like, some titanium stuff and, like, yeah. pretty basic. I, I hadn't looked at a sled of mine for a long time or one of those, and I was working on it last week, and I'm like, this thing is so simple. And, like, yeah. The, yeah. In the, I got it running, but then I think, I don't know if I got the carbs cleaned enough because, like, it's been sitting for a while, and the guy that I, the guy that I sold it to, he had it. And he rated us to like five times after that is all. And then it sat pretty much the whole time, I, he said. And um, so I need, like, I polished all the pipes up and mm. stuff. And, like, I get a, I need a new track for it because the track's junk and a couple of other things. But, uh, like, I'm excited to try to ride that thing yeah, again. Like, looks sweet. It's a 2004 Players yep. Pro XR 440, but with the big, big fucking big Yeah, I mean, those, they <laughs> said back, well, I remember... Like, if you rode those things at sea level, they were, like, riding a... It's like riding a top-field dragster. Yeah. Uh, snowmobile. Yeah. Like really? That. And I was so small. Like, I'd come out here to race those, the mod sleds, and I was just, like, it's just wheeling it everywhere. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I told my dad, like, I'm like, we got to get a smaller motor or something. So we, I would always race a 726 when I came out here yeah. in the Polaris. And then uh, that 797, though, I remember going in the mountains and, like, especially in that day, like, you, you would just annihilate all the guys in their mountain sleds. <laughs> so, like... I'm pretty excited just to yeah. try to ride it. Yeah, it looks like, sweet. It's so, aluminum tank and everything. That's yeah, like, cool as hell. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, Dennis kind of, that's when I was living with Dennis, too. So yeah. we built a badass sled. And then, uh, like, I was going to race that one at the X Games and then didn't get the chance to. But uh, that's kind of why I bought it back. I was like, ah, I kind of want to, because I rode Skidoo players and cats. So I was like, I got some cat sleds, and I'm trying to get some more back of those a little bit. And then... Uh, I'll have that Polaris, and then I have uh, my Skidoo um, Jackson hole sled I've won a couple of times on. Yeah. So, like, if I could win the Sioux or something on a Skidoo, I'd keep those, too. But I kind of, I don't know. I don't need to go crazy, but, like, I think it's <laughs> cool to have those mods. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those things are different than a stalker, unless you win, like, a points championship or something. Those are cool, but, like, the mods are cool because, like, you can look at different years even and, like, yeah. what we did to mm -hmm. things. or Especially, like, at Jackson hole this year, it seemed like the old – the old mod class was super popular. Yeah, so yeah, is that something you're on. shooting for? Yeah. With it, I mean, or is it going to be? Well, and so there you can do, it's like 20 years old. Yeah. And then you can have like a tube fucking yeah. chassis and everything. I mean, it's, yeah. You can put like a watercraft 1500 CC in there or whatever. <laughs> no, like, crap. Like, yeah. Like <laughs> it's cool. Like, and then there's a lot of pro dudes that rode their sleds or like their dad's old sleds or they're buying sleds and building them now where I think, I don't know if I did it next year, it maybe be on an Articat or 800 oh. one of those mods. Cause I have this, uh, that Brady Scout in, uh, yep. thief. He just bought my old, one of my old five oh. 800s. Yeah. And it yep. has a long track already on it. Yeah. So yep. <coughs> me and like, my brother were talking about that. They said there was no Articats out there this year no. or whatever, but it's like prime snow pro, you yep. know, right when they were having their heyday and stuff like that. But I was thinking they were a little too wide. You know, so I was thinking like a 05 is the cutoff. 05 M7 with like a fucking Speedworks big bore on it would be <laughs> like sweet. Well, those sleds are gnarly, like, and they work good too. So if you could, I mean, there's a lot of people. I think there was like 20 or 30 people doing it this year. Yeah. So I yeah, think next year it's going to be bigger. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of wish they'd take more people to the final, like, and maybe they will next year if they get more people. But if mm -hmm. they did like 10 people instead of five, because mm -hmm. it's, Everyone gets pumped about old sleds now for, like, it's just different. And mm -hmm. they're loud and, like, twin pipes and all that <laughs> shit. And it's more fun to watch. I shouldn't say more fun to watch because, like, the other sleds are gnarly. But it's just, like, different. And, like, it's almost going back to your glory days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. It's kind of cool because the new, you know, aftermarket companies are remaking a lot of the parts now. Like, Speedworks, they're recutting button clutches now. I've seen that. Huh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And yeah. They, they make, uh, like, all the bushings and stuff for... Uh, like older Polaris is what like what we run. Yeah, huh. yeah, they make a lot of the bushings and stuff like that. And yeah, now they're starting to cut button clutch secondaries. <laughs> I was like, that technology works good. <laughs> <laughs> Should have never stopped making yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So now they're having to remake it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what sleds do you guys race at the cross countries? Uh, I got a '98 XC 700, and then my brother's got a 2000 uh, XC 600. But okay. uh, his 2000 is. Uh, I mean, it's bone stock, but it's fast as hell. Huh. But yeah, we have, we only use all the old parts. We don't update no. them at all. Yeah, and it's like he went in one sport class at Natawash, and there was thirty some guys. Oh yeah. So it's like, 
old technology <laughs> still fucking works. Wow. <laughs> Shit, that's that Brad Naplin there for a while. He, when I first started racing uh, cross country, he was racing uh, 440 a cat, and like he would get top. He his times yeah. would have been top five in the pro class. Yeah, wow. Like, and he ripped like, but I rode that thing of his, and I we were at just a little shitty like practice track in a gravel pit by St. Hilaire and I tried to ride it and I was like a fish out of water. Kind of like <laughs> I didn't know enough about ice racing then either, but like it was, I was not comfortable at all. Yeah. It. Like it's we just different, but looking at our lap times, it'd be like mid pack pro open. Really? Yeah. With, That's pretty good with the old ones. Like, huh. yeah, the, the first year that the, the Pine Lake race came back to Pine Lake, like 2011, 2012 there. Uh, my dad had that old red oh, XC500, yeah. mm-hmm. yep. and we were in trail class at the same time, and we went out same flight as pro stock and semi-pro in the first flight of the morning, and dad would have beat uh, Jordan Torgerson by one second really? for semi-pro, and he would have been fifth in pro stock mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> on, that old, on that old 500. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was kind of, that was that 11, 12 year where people didn't really know a lot about no. ice racing. It was yeah. kind of new to... A yep. lot of people again. So yep. Ryan Nelson was racing. He had a 98 XC 600 that he was racing in the classic class. His kid races it now. But uh, when Ryan was racing, it must have been like 2016, 17, something like that. His, he would have gotten third in the pro open with that 98 XC with his lap times. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. It was Dan. It was That's pretty quick. They fucking move. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to line yourself up a triple for Pine Lake this coming year? Yeah, I got a Thundercat. So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm joking. Yeah, we keep sending stuff back and forth, of, yeah. like old, like Black Magic, like 900 yeah. parts. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, op- the, open is open. Yeah, Hooper Predator engines is like open is open, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be. I think I might have a sled lined up. It sounds like so that'd be fun. Actually, like, yeah. it'll be an Articat ZRT 600. So, mm. oh if, man, I've, yeah, I bet you that thing's gonna be built. Well, we'll whoever see. you got lined up to no, Naplin's actually going to do mm. it. So oh, okay. We haven't really talked about it much, but he is talking about doing it. And then, I mean, he knows how to set one up. I don't know anything about those older sleds. <laughs> like, to be honest, <laughs> like I didn't, I wasn't around him and my dad wasn't or no one else that yeah. I know. So like I go and told him, I'm like, I'll help you or give feedback, but I, and I can do what I think would be none, but I don't know if it's right or not. So, uh, I think it'd be fun just cause like I haven't done much of that fun stuff because i was always been like i don't want to take away from my other racing but Mm -hmm. at the same time like they're spread out so much now where if your sled's working good like it should you shouldn't have to be worried about it yeah and it just keeps you moving during the day and like comfortable on the track yeah that's where jumping on that zrt at nato washington the classics class it was like the first time like since the 440 race we did last year Mm -hmm. but like the first time in a while where it was just like you're just out there just for fun Mm -hmm. like just just Wait, pure fun. But you still don't want to lose. No, for sure. Like, no, I, you're still giving her hell, but oh, it's yeah. like and that that's part of the fun because you're yeah. you're going fast and it's it's handling well. Yeah. And yeah, that's part of the fun. But yeah. it's just you're not there's not a lot of money on the line. Mm-hmm. There's not no. Isn't stuff. there a bunch of money for Pine Lake though? Yeah, for Pine Lake. Yeah. Pine Lake it'll be a race. Yeah. But it'll be a fun race because we're the sled s- handles so fucking good. Yeah. We're <laughs> starting a transition where we're keeping all of our secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean I'm gonna get Kirk out there and help me for a couple yeah. weeks. So <laughs> Yeah, I gotta yeah, Brian Sturgeon's the man for ZRT. Oh, so. Just have him ride the thing. Yeah. Like he's probably I re- that, did you guys see that file last year when he hit the? Yeah, <laughs> we were. Sta- I was standing right there. Colin, at the line. Colin was right behind. No, him the, in the, during the race, yeah. and he said all I'd seen was a helmet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were standing right there. Yeah, we watched the whole thing. Yeah, it was, was wild. I can't believe he didn't die. <laughs> like, I know it was crazy to watch him just yeah. jump up and start running yeah, after the sled. It's like, holy shit, good to see he's not a, he's not he hurt. He, he yeah. starfished and just oh, yeah. fucking slid for a long. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he, yeah, he slid a while behind that sled. And that sled just rolled on, kept on rolling. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen. No, but, no, he's no. tough. Like I, oh. I don't know him that well, but every time he's nice to me. But like. I heard stories. He's just a brute when he was younger. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he he will get tangled up with you, like oh, yeah. with, in the classics class. Like we'll be coming in the corners, and he'll he'll push you out a little bit. <laughs> it's like I don't want to run in with have a run in with you, just in case. Like oh, he I comes wouldn't. back and just fucking 
T-bones me or something? I could put you in a headlock if you... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. you I, that's the old dudes. You got to worry about them. Like, the kids... The kids are a bunch of pussies now. Like, yeah. they don't even bump each other. I'm like, fuck, my dad told me to take out my own mom if I had to. <laughs> like, so, I don't know. I I wouldn't mess with any old dudes. That's, well, that's, yeah. that's funny. That's uh, my first pro race down in Okoboji, Iowa, yeah. with you, against you. And I'm in Wes's trailer. I said, okay, if, if you don't run into me, I won't run into you. Yeah. And Wes, oh, I'm going to run into you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I... I won't kill someone or clean them out <laughs> yeah. that bad, but I'll, I mean, you got to win it. Racing's racing. I yeah. mean, your friend's off the track, but you don't want to hurt someone, but uh, you do what you got to do to <laughs> win a race because I will do exactly the same thing. I told, uh, Zach knows that. I've put him, I've put him over to burn hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, even practice it, we used to do that. We'd be like testing in the spring and I'm like, Zach, I'm going to, you go in front of me and I'm going to see if I can take you out. He's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta but, practice my takeouts. Yeah, yeah like I'm gonna <laughs> clean you out. And I, well, one time I was almost bad. I almost messed his leg up, but it was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> we should probably take it down a notch. <laughs> but he's fun. Uh, but. So then, so how did you kind of transition from being in Colorado to like coming over here full time in Minnesota? Like, was it snowcross and then cross country, or was or did the Minnesota stuff kind of start when you started doing cross country mainly? No, like I, um, my dad always, cause like my dad always said, he's like, if you want to be anything, you're gonna have to go to the nationals and like where it's big, like if you want to do this. And, uh, so that's, and Dennis Dermis, he helped a lot on snowcross when I was, um, on Polaris, like we would travel back and forth. I mean, we would out in Colorado where I live, um, that you go to school Monday through Thursday and then you get Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Uh-huh. So, like, nice. we would, my dad would work his ass off all week, and I'd work on snowmobiles. That's what my dad always said, too, is, like, I'll make the money you got. I work on the snowmobiles. And I didn't, I was young. I didn't know my, <laughs> like, I was 14 years old doing shocks. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, but, <laughs> like, I figured it out. And There's then, no YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just going to say that. There's no, no YouTube. Like, it is. So. Uh, Bill Rader and uh, Rager and stuff, they taught me how, and then Dermis showed me stuff, but, so like Dermis, same way he's we would come back and racing and uh and then and when I switched to Cat in 05, I went to uh Cook City in 04, kinda at the end of that when I had that Pro X, but that stuff and uh went to Cook City testing with Kirk and like Simons and Malinowski and Garth and all these guys were there. And like I knew who they were because I would come out here and race with them and they were like fast and I was doing good like I was beating them or some of them and mm-hmm. um that next winter um my dad or some or Marty Coleman played a big part of me getting on Nauticat too but they asked like Coletti and them if or St- I can't I think Sturgeon was the um race director that first year and I didn't ever yeah. meet him and but like just kind of he knew who I was and stuff but then he gave me a deal and Cletty, I think, was the main re- way that got me out here full time in the winter because he asked Kirk if I could come out and stay with him in this basement or whatever. Oh, so. that's, that was one of my questions on how because I knew you stayed at the Hibberts place, yep. so I want I was wondering on how that relationship kind of started or something to yeah, I mean, that's, hang out, stay with Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically, and that's kind of Tucker. Had, I can't remember when he he wasn't racing when I was. He would just do X Games, so Kirk. I was just racing out of his shop at his house and like I'd stay in the basement and I mean all day I'd just work on sleds. I didn't have a mechanic or nothing. And uh so I'd basically just work on sleds all week and then I'd come to fertile like once or twice a w- during the week and practice and then uh I just did that every winter for a long time. And then like I raced for Christian Brothers the in oh eight and that was good and then I got hurt at the end of the year. So then I kinda went back to doing my own thing and I mean, I kind of always had to do my own thing, which was, I mean, I could tell you what it was good, but it was bad. Like a lot of these other guys, you know, while I'm working on my sleds every day, they're out practicing. So mm-hmm. that, that kind of hindered me a little bit, but I don't regret it at all. But like the, so I would, I'd come live with Kirk every winter. And then I think it was like uh, 12 or 13, right around then when I, that's kind of when I switched to cross country. Cause like, the 12 snow cross sled for cat was garbage. Like <laughs> I could, you could not figure it out at the, especially at the beginning. And like, yeah, the first year of the pro cross. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was like, it was not good. And I kind of 
that's kind of when I was like, well, I'm going to have to start doing something different. Like, or if I want to keep racing, like whether it's hill, hill climb or, uh, I'd never even watched a cross country. Like <laughs> I, I'm not shooting you. Like I, I never even went to one until, uh, I think it was like, and the girlfriend I had at the time, uh, she was related to Corey Davidson mm. or is, and, uh, she was going to watch. So I went to watch and I, I didn't know anything about Pine Lake, but like started talking like Peters and them, like oh, yeah. Nathan Peters and mm-hmm. watching them. And Torgy was kicking everyone's butt in the semi pro class. And, uh, I kind of told Clady, I'm like, I, I'd want to try that cross country. And he's like, go to Pine Lake and watch. So I did that. And then, um, that's kind of right when I moved full time to thief too, uh, is just cause of the cross country. And then her, and then I was, uh, wanted to work at Arctic Cat. That's like everyone's dream job, you know, like, mm-hmm. when you're, especially when you're younger. So did that and moved here. And, and then that's when I was like, well, I'll just race cross country. And then I would do some of the part-time snow cross vet class or whatever. But so that's basically Kirk and them. I, they just took me in under the wing and Kirk was busy working all the time. So we didn't get a, and Tucker wasn't around racing. So Kirk would go with me to the races and we had test and do stuff, but it wasn't like, uh, I mean, he wasn't like my full blown mechanic or yeah. like, mm-hmm. I wish, I wish that could have happened. <laughs> it, uh, so it's cool. It's fun. It, uh, I learned a lot from him and like I said, he was always gone cause his priority, like he's one of those, him or Tucker, like if they're doing something, they do it 120% or mm-hmm. 150%. Mm-hmm. Like, so his job was to make snowmobiles good for trail and race and everything. So that's what he was doing. And then, like I said, I would just hang out in the shop by myself and work all day on sleds. And yeah. Hmm. But, so it's good. They, I mean, they're, they're in a better family than them for, I mean, they always treated me as their own or still do try to go riding with Kirk in the winter a little bit. And I don't see those guys enough, but Tucker came out and helped, but then, or didn't help, but he came and, uh, rode snowmobile this winter in the mountains a few times and then uh he likes antler shed hunting so we went and looked for some sheds when i was <laughs> hurt a little bit and like he's so it's fun it's we didn't get to hang out that much when we were racing because yeah. those guys like i said they were they're 150 percent in on whatever they're doing don't matter what it is even like shed hunting he's like <laughs> just full <laughs> commitment yeah like yeah he's harley like i he's awesome though like i think it's cool that people are like I give him props because anything he's ever done, he's on, he's in on it 110. percent But mm. yeah, those are special type of people. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, and you'll never people like that. You'll never beat them at what they're doing. No. I mean, you might a little bit, but not much. But uh, he's passionate about whatever it is he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, so when you so yeah, you started working at Articat. What what was your job at Articat? Because you whenever that was when I first kind of start started hanging around with you. I didn't really know what you did there. Is, you were just kind of working in the shop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> were you like just like a race shop no, kind of guy? I mean, or I was. So my boss was Brian Dick, mm-hmm. and uh, I was hired on to help them. Like I was a shop tech, is what my title was, but I was the ZR team shop, and then I would work with the other guys like Roger, whoever. And I would test. I would ride sleds, or I would work on sleds, or if they were building prototype stuff, I'd help build that stuff or Mm. um i always wanted to be like the race sled kind of like what kirk was always doing and that's kind of i think was my goal like the engineers obviously they would be designing stuff but like my goal was to help develop stuff and then have them design it or test and i'd test it or whatever and uh i always wanted to be like race manager or whatever and um so that's kind of what they let me do and then like in the winter Brian was a racer too. And I told him when I started working there kind of too, or asked him, I should say that I want to focus on racing still. Like I, they weren't paying me enough to not go racing. Like it was not <laughs> like <laughs> it wasn't enough for me to quit racing, but like, or even just, I enjoy racing so much that it was like, if I'm going to work here, I'm going to race. And like, luckily Brian was my boss. Cause it, any of the other guys in the other teams and stuff, they probably wouldn't have been. Yeah. And even Cletty, I think he pushed for me pretty hard to race. But that enabled me. I mean, I rode a bunch. And and then the switching to the cross-country thing, you were, you were uh, we would test stuff on race sleds in the open class and stuff, like, that we were going to have the next year or two. Mm-hmm. Or in the spring, we always did those test trips. And so that's kind of my job is, like, I would help. And, like, 
in 18, that was a big part of the snow cross. Like, Cat, we pretty much won every race almost, I yep. think. Like, mm-hmm. it, was, it was unreal. And then that's when kind of Textron took over and everything started getting budgets cut and all this stuff. And, like, people's jobs were changing. And, I mean, I'd be working on touring sleds or mountain sleds or, I mean, I'd be in the win- summertime. I didn't really, it didn't matter to me because I like doing different stuff anyways. But we'd be, like, cleaning up stuff or whatever. So it was kind of, I could do about anything. And, like, we would go on test trips quite a bit and everything, which was fun. But during the winter, I didn't get a, I didn't go as traveling as much just because racing was my priority, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when Brian, Brian was kind of the one up on the stage uh, on revealing that 2018 cro- snow cross sled mm-hmm. at Hay Days. Yeah. So, like, uh, I know I would heard he was, they were working on the Catalyst even when Brian was still there. So, did you have any... Yeah, I mean, the catalyst. I mean, that was supposed to be out in like twenty. So twenty. Yeah, like, they, but the when Textron took over, then like everything kept getting pushed back. Oh, really? So like, mm. it was that was kind of one of those. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like that was one of those time frames when it was fun, but it wasn't fun because like we would try to even like Kirk and Brian or whoever like. Like, oh, we want to change the front arm on the snow cross side, but then they wouldn't let us change stuff to make it better for the next year. Mm. So it was, like, kind of frustrating. Like, mm. And then, like, some of that stuff didn't get brought to the table till two or three years later. Yeah. So it's kind of – that's when it got un- – I don't know if it unfun is the word for me to say, but, like, it kind of took the wind out of my sails of working there even. Cause sure. Because, like, they were getting rid of – people like forcing people to retire like russ ebert or uh roger like people that in the snowmobile world i mean they don't even care about the money at that point they just want to be involved mm-hmm. in it and even kirk like he he just wanted to help make art cat snowmills good like yeah he would do it for free if he had to he didn't give a shit same russ ebert i mean and uh, roger mike mccardle he's been the one helping us on oh, our yeah. crt so. dude they, like those dudes when i was it's so much fun when they were all like when I first started there. Like I'd go uh, break time or um, lunch time. Like I'd just go hang out with those dudes. Like mm-hmm. dude, Carlos in there. Like he would run them dinos all day. Every <laughs> day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> don't, it's fucking nuts what those guys did. Like and they yeah. were good at and they are still good at what they did. And there's so much knowledge. That's the thing is like snowmobiles. They change a lot, but like there's a lot of stuff that's been done that uh like the younger generation like engineers don't know that those guys have already tried yeah. mm-hmm. and like so they spin their i call it like spinning their wheels redoing something or retrying something that there's reasons it didn't work and yep uh, like he was telling us about we were asking about these uh black magic pipes and he's like well greg spalding worked on those yep he's like i still don't understand it it's some kind of black magic science <laughs> that goes into pipes <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> just yeah i mean it's in each person that's if those companies like that at Polaris or Skidoo or anyone, someone that's good at what they do, like they can do something way quicker than like mm-hmm. the other guy that don't know anything about it's going to do it in. And like, there's a chance that he's tried that stuff before yeah. that mm-hmm. this other guy is going to think of. But. Like even Coletti said that on the carbide podcast that he said, like you'd think now with all the technology and everything we have now that it'd be so easy and so much faster to like make stuff and change stuff. Yeah. But he said it's, it's almost slower. Yep. Mm. it's yeah i mean back in the day you would just whip it up in the shop and then try yeah. it and then it worked or it didn't and then like if it did they would figure out a way to make it strong and like last and then i mean there you go testing it for a year or whatever and you're like okay this is gonna work here we go yeah and now it's like like the last couple of years i was there i mean you're doing all this electronic testing and stuff and then those people are doing that but then when it comes down to it then all of a sudden that stuff's bending and breaking mm-hmm. and it's like well it doesn't bend or break on our frequency test and it's like okay well why is that <laughs> like we could have that's so there is i think you got to have both though i mean you need the new technology and the old technology yeah mm-hmm. like so, well mm-hmm. your test doesn't have me and herf dropping it 20 feet out of the yeah. sky yeah. off a frozen yeah. approach well, 100 <laughs> like, percent. like yeah. for, in that 40 below temperature yeah. Like, yeah just things like that it, you can't replicate and then the knowledge like that certain people have or don't have is just like you can't replicate that either mm-hmm. so yeah it's, but those old timers like i i always said to like i'm like ah, i would have been a whole different deal like in the 90s working with those guys like mm-hmm. 
I mean, they party a lot and stuff and did mm-hmm. some wild shit. But, like, <laughs> like, it was a whole different animal. Like, and that's when there was unlimited money or resources or whatever. Like, I mean, you hear stories like they were testing. Like, they would take tracks on a – I'm just using examples. But, like, to go win races, they would put a track in a water tank and re- they would – whatever tracks had the less resistance, they would put those in their race sled so they could have a little more speed, like, mm-hmm. shit like that. But now you just throw whatever one you get off the yeah. shelf in there. Like, it. so there's... Or I've heard stories of, like, Kirk Hibbert, like, had, like, 10 or 20 pipes just mm-hmm. in flow tested every mm-hmm. single one of them and then yep. you know, just picked the best one. Yeah, I mean, I... Th- just... There's mm-hmm. every... Yeah, for sure. Every brand has done stuff like that, like mm-hmm. blue printing motors or whatever. I think it still goes on even, but, like... There's definitely, like, say if you have 10 Y pipes and you run them on the dyno, because they do that stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. But then, like, say McCardle or whoever, they're like, hey, here's this Y pipe. It's two more or one more horse than that other one yeah. that you got. So here you go. Put this on your race side. So that stuff, I mean, that's always gone on oh, throughout yeah. mm-hmm. racing. But you're not supposed to do that anymore. But I know, it, I guarantee it still <laughs> does. Like, mm-hmm. that's that was one thing cool about Arctic Cat or even Polaris, like, the resources you have or the accessibility to that stuff, just yeah. because you're right there, you have totally different, but that's where I've seen with Skidoo, like it's, the, you're they're up where they're at in Valcourt or Quebec and or Canada, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> so you don't get to see any of that stuff, but mm-hmm. it's, uh, the hard part too, is you're spending all that time that you could spend on that. And it's like, well, we're spending this on a race then we shouldn't be doing that. But yeah, so it's cool though to see it and be, part of it a little bit i think in the like i said in the 90s and even 2000s it was a whole different animal yeah like it those guys they were so strung so thin you couldn't really do that stuff when i was there but it uh it would have been cool because you heard stories about it yeah like, like i heard stories of like what joey hallstrom's budget was in like 97 yeah. right. it was just like <laughs> it could have what like it wasn't so corporate no it yeah. sounds like yeah. it was yeah. just more like a big ass race shop Yep, kind of. Mm. You could just do whatever and try whatever, mm. and oh, just sure. less corporate. Yeah, yep. and they had the resources and the people. I mean, each they had our many guys racing out of those shops, and they had each had one or two mechanics, and then Joey had guys like Gladdy and all these guys trying stuff every day and night, and I guess it's just a different world. I mean, you go to the race shop now, there's one or two guys racing out of it, mm-hmm. and then like all the Burbs and Hector have been around forever, and they're smart like setup uh, motors and all this clutching and all this stuff, but like their resources are not, they can't go try different pipes or all this stuff. If you want to do any of that now, you have to go to like aftermarket, like Speedworks or something, but then you can't do that because it's not stock either. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Mm -hmm. uh, it's just different, but it's, I don't know. I, I wish I could have raced in like the (laughs) nineties. I'm not saying, I I don't know if I would have been fast on those things or not, but like it would have been totally different. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. Dear at all, you hear stories about him, like at Black Magic and all these places, like in TNS, like the sleds they used to make, they weren't even the same. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't even ride the same sleds anyone else nope. rode. Yeah. Like no. Or Sturgeon, like these guys had so much cool shit that now, yeah. you, now everyone has the same thing. Yep. I mean, they just found one. It was a, a TS had built a composite tunnel and bulkhead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's not yeah. an Articat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole chassis is completely different. Yeah, it's so it would have been cool to be part of that. Yeah, but, uh, or, or, like uh, them getting rid of mod sleds at Snowcross, I think that kind of mm-hmm. made it difficult to test mm-hmm. stuff too. So it's kind of plateaued a little bit, I think, on the sled part. It's hard though too. I mean, you look at dirt bikes. They, I mean, like Ken Roxon, he rides a bike that's it's not on the same technology wise, no. but like it, he, they still rip. So it's oh like, yeah, it's a it's essentially like a 2018 bike with like the some components on it you can see they're almost like 2010 parts mm-hmm. yeah so it's so i don't know it's just different but well that's players as skid frames too after they went away from the beaver tail you look at the new skid frame it's yeah. well really fucking close to well, like yeah brian brian had said that too that the yeah. new skidoo one is similar to like what he raced on with yep. his rev yep. so, yeah 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 it's really similar to an extra 10 yeah player skid frame the new one is so it's like if they would have done a little more, I don't know how how that works. <laughs> like it, something just works so good that we should ask Alex that when we hit him on the phone. Yeah, like, why did you guys go back <laughs> in time? <laughs> yeah. 
fun. You ride one of those old sleds, and they don't feel comfortable like a new sled. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, but those guys hauled butt on them. Yeah, that's what when I tra- trail rode our our ZR four forty the one time, I was giving her hell in the ditch going to Leonard, and I was going fast. So it's like back in the day, they're like Pake and Kirk going fast in the ditch. They were hauling ass. Yeah, going so fast. It was, it was like they was <laughs> they were still on four forties, but they were still going scary fast in the mm-hmm. ditch. Yeah, I don't. So it would have been interesting to be around that. It yeah. would have been interesting to be around that stuff, but I, I don't know. It's just different nowadays. Yeah. Um, so you kind of started your cross country career there. Yeah, it was it was like 2012, 2013, yep. showing up in a semi. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the big white and blue semi. Yeah, yeah I'm some your... squid that never rode cross country. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's funny. I mean, I came to the races with it, and uh, it was good and bad because I always stayed like. Reason I had that thing is I always stayed in my trailers on the race weekends. Oh sure. And then uh, you're not spending t- money on hotels and everything. You get more sleep, and I, you know what I mean. It just I was way more comfortable doing that. And uh, so we had that uh, that Joelstead that helped me. He was part owner of it too, and we had that uh, stacker trailer. And it was, I mean, at that point I was still planning on racing snowcross. So that's kind of what you had to have for that to take extra sleds and everything. Yeah. But, um, is funny when I came to the cross countries because like, I mean, Christian Brothers had one, but no one else really did. Yep. And then like, mm. it's kind of a pain though because you had to park where it is just a pain in the ass. But I'd always pay, park by Corey and Hector and them anyways because I was always good buddies with them. But uh, the first race, yeah, the first race I ever went to was Detroit Lakes for cross country. And I remember I came home from Pine Lake and I was talking to Kirk about like ice setup because I'm like, I don't know anything about this <laughs> stuff, you know, and Kirk's just laughing and then he's asking <laughs> me who's doing good or whatever and we're talking and then uh he's like well you gotta set up your sled for ice and I'm like well what do I do and he's like well you just slug down the shocks this and that and uh I got some comp bars upstairs from the ZRs <laughs> <laughs> and like and he's like you gotta sharpen your studs and all this stuff and I'm like what in the hell are you talking about like so I got all his stuff and then like Brian Dick and them they were kind of getting back into the ice racing at that time so they helped me out and then like I can't remember who did my shocks. I think I did them to Carver or something. And uh, the, I had never rode on the ice, but then I went to Detroit, or like the night before I left down, I stopped at uh, Ingolstead's farm because they were like, oh, yeah, you got to just you sharpen your studs on the grinder. And, like, they would put a wrench on them and a drill. Oh, sure. Yep. And, like, mm-hmm. you just spin them. But yep. I was doing it with, like, cross-country ditch ones with carbide uh, tips. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, and I didn't know they had to be, like, pointy sharp. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I did this, and, like, I spent, like, I wrecked their grinding wheel in their shop. <laughs> <laughs> threw all my shit in the trailer, go down to Detroit Lakes. And I'm, like, twerking on my sled all night. And then uh, in the morning, they uh, they go to do their parade lap, and I'm, like, Ah, whatever. So I get my sled put together and I was parked by Nathan Peters and all them. And they didn't know who the hell I was or they knew I was from Snowcross, but they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just trying it out. And, uh, so we, I rolled my sled out and I was always by myself. I had my girlfriend with me, but like I go to get my sled out. I put it on the asphalt and I just drive yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and Deer Doll just happened to be there. Cause he came to watch and hang out. Cause I had met I didn't know him real well at the time, but, like, he comes there to do that, and he's, like, just throwing his hands in there, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, so yep. that was another thing I wondered is how how you got to know Brian, like, bef- like when you had just first started cross-country. Because well, Brian had kind of already retired by yeah, that time, so. Yeah, he, he had quit, like, uh, I don't know what year, but he, so him and, when I was racing for Christian Brothers. Uh, oh, I suppose him and DJ day, were really good. Yeah, him buddies. and DJ. Mm-hmm. So they... They came out hunting and uh, <laughs> bow hunting, and I wasn't much of a bow hunter at all. Like, I didn't go <laughs> bow hunting before that at all, but I'm like, and I was, I uh, can't remember what I was, I think I was hanging drywall at that time with my dad in the summers, and Deer Doll and DJ showed up. They're like, ah, we want you to take us to these good spots hunting this and that, and I kind of, you can always find elk pretty much where I'm at, like, if you're local and you kind of, it's like you guys and deer. I mean, you kind of got spots you can mm-hmm. go find deer, you know? Yeah. And, uh. So I talked to my other buddies. I'm like, hey, these dudes are coming to me. <laughs> and I'm like, but then like the day they're coming, I was like, I need to just go buy a bow. So I go buy a bow that morning in Denver. And then uh, they're driving through Denver as I'm buying this bow. And I'm like, I'll meet you back at my house. You guys can get ready and sign and uh, sign it in and everything. 
And I'm like, I need a sight in my boat. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I just bought one. And then like, I was all pumped. <laughs> and like, so I think Deardall is first. He's probably just like, what is this idiot doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not like, how this works. No. Come on. No, what, like, who the hell is this guy? Oh, it, was, it was so funny. So then like, I came up and they helped me sight in my bow. And then uh, we went, it's funny because my other buddy, he had permission on this uh, land right by the national park. In the national park, like, during rutting season is nuts. Like, yeah. there's elk just bugling <laughs> everywhere. So we go there. We drive there, and it's, like, I don't know, 4 in the afternoon, and we get there, and we're getting out of the truck. And it's funny because, like, the we parked towards the park, and when we drove in, we didn't see this smaller spike. And uh, we get out of the truck, and there's elk just going nuts and, like, <laughs> bugling and stuff. And DJ and Brian are just, like, looking at each other, like, they're just like, holy gosh. Like, yeah. and then, <laughs> Where the hell did he yeah, bring us like, to? They're like, what's going on? Because, like, you can't usually hunt on areas like that. And uh, I look behind, and I'm, like, going to get my bow. And uh, there's a freaking, five, like, a four-by-five, a smaller elk. Mm -hmm. And it's walking straight towards us like a pet horse. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, and I'm like, get your bows and shoot that thing. <laughs> and they're, like, laughing. They're like, no, like, if it's this easy. And then, like, you can see big six-by-sevens and, like, monster elk. And I'm like, and my buddy that was with us, his name's Matt, and uh, he had never shot an elk with a bow. So he's, like, he's getting his bow, and he's freaking firing he next thing you know he's firing arrows like he's in a freaking indian fight <laughs> and like medieval yeah, warfare just yeah, like, launching arrows yeah, <laughs> so like and deardall actually has all this on video like uh. so deardall's video in it and i'm laughing running around and like dj's just like shaking his head and like <laughs> so like we do this and then uh this buddy of mine wounds this elk he shoots it straight in the shoulder and it like takes off for the park and i'm just like oh no like <laughs> so like it gets to the there's a river that separates the private and the land and then it comes back and i'm running around picking up arrows for my buddy <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like we're just laughing and then uh deer it all and like so then finally we get that elk my buddy duds it again and then we we go get a tractor to hang it up and stuff like it's totally not hunting at all <laughs> and, uh, but like it's so funny and then uh so like we do that and my buddy's just pumped that he got that elk and it's cool and then uh so the next we're like oh we're gonna we're gonna we gotta go look and see where the elk because they come up every night and then go back in the park in the morning and uh I was like we need to put you guys on the good spots because like i don't i was like i'll shoot one in the rifle season like i don't care mm -hmm. but i was like i want they had spend like 800 bucks for a tag each and mm -hmm. so we put them in the good spots the next morning and then uh sure as shit the elk don't go by them they come right by me <laughs> yep and i'm like i'd never shot an elk with a bow or like tried to even and i'm or anything at that point <laughs> didn't like, even own a bow no why <laughs> like yeah, you like can't the, just go out there and shoot a bow and kill no. an animal <laughs> well so i'm like they're watching and like the elk are coming the total opposite way and Deer all and DJ over there just like, what the fuck? Like, they're like <laughs> pissed off. Well, then I know, like, I pull back on this huge elk. Like, is like a record one. And uh. Uh, I'm spined, like, the very tip of its back. <laughs> oh. And it takes off running. And I just hear DJ and Brian, you dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just yelling at me, you idiot. And they, like, run over to me. And they're just, like, yelling at me and cussing. And I'm like. I didn't even want to shoot the thing. Like, I like I was hoping they'd come by you, and they're just, like, pissed. Well, then, it's funny. Like, so we hunted or whatever, but, like, that whole, that, later that day is weird because, like, we go to this other place, and I shot a, I'm not shitting you, there's a magpie, like, 60 yards away in a tree, and I'm like, I bet you I could hit that magpie, and he's like, not a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> and I sling an arrow at it and hit it, and they're like, you can hit that stupid magpie but you can't hit a record out so like it was just that but that trip was fun like uh i hung out with those guys deardall ended up getting an elk that time he actually lost it like dj you know how he is he kind of got all fired up because like then we're looking for this elk and deardall freaking lost this elk and then like we went looking for it for two days and then finally they were supposed to leave this day and uh we're walking out and we left Deer Dog because we we're like kind of pissed at him. And we thought he was, just, we thought he was lying to us. Because, like, when he, especially if he's drinking, he might stretch the truth a little bit sometimes. But uh, he's fucking, so he's like, I'm going back. I know where it's at. I'm going to find it. And then he calls us like an hour later and he found it. And we're just like, what the fuck? Like, we walked around for two days and then uh, 
we packed it out. And then ever after that, like he's pretty much come almost every year again. Mm. Hunting. And like, yeah. I didn't really, I mean, we'd never really, we never rode snowmobiles together, but, and then like when I was out here, I'd go to the, cause I, I always wanted to race cards when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. like where we're at, there's not a tracks like out mm-hmm. here. So like, when I moved out here, I was like, I'm going to buy me a race car and I'm going to go race it. <laughs> so I went and did that for a summer or two. And like, but I'd go hang out with Deirdre and like, he's really smart at all that stuff. I, but I just, it's, uh, he's a good person, like just mm-hmm. like any racer. And he's pretty fun to hang out with. Like, especially if you get him drinking, he, <laughs> he's pretty entertaining. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> he likes to talk about the past a lot, but yeah. <laughs> tell me how stupid i am because i'm slow and all this other bullshit <laughs> <laughs> probably a good thing he doesn't race now because he probably would beat me but no. uh, he's i know he was, he's told me stories he's really shaking his head last year when you're trying to put a battery on the back of your sled oh, yeah i mean <laughs> we were well it wasn't me it was numb nuts uh jesse nah. he, he put the battery on i put a backpack so no one knew what was in there but yeah. And we were trying, because, like, we were struggling with, like, <laughs> to get comfortable. And I'm like, well, well, the Iron Dog guys have a bunch of weight on their sled. Maybe we do that, and it'll work. And, like, I thought it was working, but then I wrecked. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, this is working good. So I go wide open across the lake. Is that stupid walker race? Yeah. And, like, I was not comfortable. And you, it's weird because normally at high-speed chop, like, I can just go wide open. But, like, that was not fun there, and I – Thought I had my sled working, and then next thing you know, I'm barrel rolling across the lake, <laughs> and I'm like, "This is stupid." So I, I mean, I just trail rode the rest of the time. But it, <laughs> we were trying. It's frustrating because like the some sleds, like a, a Polaris or Arctic Cat, if you change certain things, like you can tell a big difference, like mm-hmm. ten or twenty pounds on a spring rate, and like we were changing stuff like fifty pound spring rates and all this stuff, and we couldn't really figure out what was going on, and so then that's when I thought maybe we'll put some weight on the back but then jesse <laughs> jesse right before his race puts a battery on the back and we're just like oh no brian said he didn't even go up to staging no, with him he's embarrassed he so disgusted yeah, he's like, oh my gosh idiots uh, and this and that. i'm like well, i don't know what else to do right now like and i thought we shouldn't have put the battery but it was pretty funny it fell off anyways but yeah uh, it went flying yeah. yeah but i mean he's got a lot of good knowledge and ideas and stuff oh and for sure he's mm-hmm. uh I've learned a lot from him. He's always, I mean, he ever since the hunting, I mean, every year at Pine Lake, he's always been in my trailer mm-hmm. helping or ain't afraid to help or tell me things or whatever. So he's a good person, but uh, he's funny. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's funny. And yeah, people definitely listen to him, like in the gas stop and the pits and everything. When oh, he yeah. starts talking, everyone wants to yeah. hear yeah. what he's got to say. Oh, for and, sure. I mean, yeah. He's gnarly. I mean, I think if he would have ra- kept racing, he would have won a lot more races, obviously. Mm, yeah. And, like, mm. the 500s and stuff, like, there were the – sto- and I don't know because I wasn't there, but the stories you hear from other people even and stuff, like, he would just drive by people and make them, like, mm-hmm. look like they weren't even riding. But mm-hmm. uh, I wish I could have watched him race back in the day or even, like, anyone in those guys. Like, DJ and all those guys, they were pretty gnarly. No. But, uh, but that's kind of – so deer all comes out hunting. That's about the only thing. <laughs> we don't. I don't go fishing as much as stuff with him. But and I, I'm always working when he's going hunting. When he comes, he just stays at my house pretty much. And then that's busy season for digging because oh, our sure. season's so short. So I just go work, and then I tell him if he gets an elk, just let me know, and I'll come help him drag it out. But he, uh, he's he I, likes hunting. If you if you get like a big elk like deep in a valley of a mountain or something, how do you get it out of there? Like uh you gotta pack it out yeah. usually like but now with e-bikes and stuff mm. like that makes oh, i really like that ktm free ride my yeah, buddy yeah. has one of those and i've thrown two shoulder or like two legs in a backpack you can't even hardly lift it like yeah. mm-hmm. you're getting on the bike and your buddy has to help you but like <laughs> ride it out of the woods and come back and it makes life a lot easier oh, oh my gosh i, I bet. never think about that no it's huh so it's there's ways but like there's times i mean me and my other buddies sort of you throw a leg in a backpack and like takes you all day to get out with one trip. Mm-hmm. So it takes Jeez. you like, it's a gnarly like, but all my buddies are hunters. So they, if, and I always tell everyone too, I'm like, if you shoot an elk or anything, come, I'll come help you. Cause like, it's mm-hmm. a good workout. Yeah. And it's, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. it's just like a bonding thing too with your buddies. Like, so we'll <laughs> do that. And, uh, but it's gnarly. Sometimes you're just after 
packing one out, you're just like, oh, I don't care if I ever see an elk again. <laughs> but a couple of days later, you're going hunting again. Yeah, so, yeah. No, it sounds like a hell of a workout. Mm-hmm. You got to be in shape to do it. That's yeah. what it sounds like. I mean, there's guys that come from out here and they are not used to altitude, and they mm-hmm. like that the, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're up in the mountains. It's, you're, you're not ready. And they're for not it. in shape anyway. Yeah, so, like old dudes. Like I'll take my dad hunting, and they, he just gets pissed. He's like, "What the fuck are we walking here for? <laughs> yeah, why, why are we walking so much? Yeah, like this yeah. is stupid. I just want to sit on a, a field and walk, <laughs> wait for him. And it's like, <laughs> can't do that in the mountains. No, not all the time. Mm. So it's it's a lot of work, but it's fun. Like I think deer doll and them they like it so much because they didn't grow up in the mountains either. Mm-hmm. So. Like, mm-hmm. You're just exploring, kind of. Yeah. You're like a little kid just walking around mm-hmm. the woods with a, yeah, waiting like, to shoot something. When me and Mandy went up to Alaska, like, just to see the mountains up there, like, oh. it's just, like, it's just, you guys see this every day? Mm-hmm. It's oh, just unreal. It's, that's, and I didn't, it's hard if you grow up, I think anyone that grows up in the mountainous areas or, like, Alaska or anything, you don't, you're kind of spoiled by it mm-hmm. from a kid. And then, mm-hmm. like, at least me, I didn't appreciate it as much until, like, you live out here or something, and then you go back there and, like, you're just like, ah, oh, this is unreal. Like, yeah. I'll even go like that. And you get older, the older you get to, like you appreciate it. And you like, like we'll go on a side by side or dirt, like ride and throw dirt bikes. And I'll just, you just sit on top of the mountain and just like mm-hmm. look over everything. You're like, this is unreal. Um, yeah. One of your Snapchats recently, you were snowmobiling and you were like above the cloud, the clouds. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's yeah. freaking sweet. I mean, God I, damn. Like our sled said we were like 13,000 feet. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> it is nuts. Like I, damn. That is that was pretty cool being on top of that hill because I've never been up to that hill until this winter mm. and it was pretty cool. That's how I feel <laughs> sitting at the top of Bunker Hill. Like, Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> Look at this view! <laughs> Look at all them trees! <laughs> oh yeah, they, like that's the truth. You can see yeah. a long ways out here. Yeah, that's I when I lived here, I had a powered parachute thing and I'd fly that thing around and like. You could see the red leg. Like, oh yeah, uh, it's just forever. flat like, as it's can so be. Cool. Like, yep, out there you can't see that far usually, but it is it's I, pretty awesome. I had that written down your little single prop, <laughs> oh, yeah. little glider plane thing. That or, thing had to be huh. the first time taking that out. What was that like? How <laughs> sketchy was it? Did it wow. have a bombardier engine in it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Like. The first time I took that thing out, Lance, my buddy Eflin, he was over, and I had just cleaned the carburetors on it. <laughs> and I, I had never took a class or anything, and I was like, and I had bought it, and uh, Chad Leon had bought one, too, from the same guy. He's like, hey, dude, like, I found these powered parachutes. We need to buy them. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Like, I've always wanted to fly, but I'm afraid of heights. So I'm like, I'm like, all right. You're afraid of heights. Yeah. Like, it is. So then he buys them. He brings them back. They've been sitting I don't know the whole story is pretty funny, but like, so I get mine running and Lance comes over and he's like, what are you going to do with this thing? And I'm like, well, I've been watching YouTube videos. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? Like how to fly it? I was like, no, I just been watching what not to do. And he's like, okay. So then, uh, that day it was windy, like yesterday, windy, like oh, really? not good. And I never had seen anything where there was like a maximum wind you're supposed to, supposed to fly. Uh. And, uh, so we're like, at my house was North of Thief, and then Mike Schley, he's a guy that worked at Articat for a while. Now he works at uh, Argo, but he, we were out there messing around with in the field, and I was just driving around like a buggy thing. And then uh, <laughs> he stops by, and he's like, what are you doing? You're going to fly that thing or what? And, like, making fun of me, and I'm like, I'm like, I think it's too windy. And then, like, I tried to call <laughs> Corey Loeffler. I'm like, and I left him a message. I'm like, hey, I'm uh, – I'm just thinking about flying this thing. I know you have one. Is it too windy today? Like, <laughs> let me know. And let, me, let me know pretty soon. <laughs> and like, as I'm suiting up. And uh, so we get, and they're, Lance and Mike are, like, making fun of me. They're like, you're fucking, you're scared, this and that. I'm like, I ain't scared. I'm like, I'll fly this thing. <laughs> like, I'll follow like, this guy right yeah, now. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't realize what I was getting myself into. So then, the uh, and then. So we leave my house and go north, and there's no power lines. That's the biggest thing I wanted. There's no power lines around. And uh, we there's a road, and there's these big ditches on both sides. And, like, it was so windy, the chute was just wanting to, like, drag me backwards. So I had Lance and Schley hold the parachute, <laughs> and I, like, strapped into it and stuff. And then uh, they, they're like, well, all right, we're going to let go of the chute when you hit the gas. And I'm like, all right, so we try that. And, like, the first time, the chute, like, flips, and then there's a car coming, and, like, so I stop and I'm like, God, oh, we get, we got to do it again. 
So then uh, we do it again. Like the car goes by, and I'm like, "You guys hold the chute until I power it up, and then it'll inflate it up, and then like hold onto it tight." Because I had parasailed yeah. when I was younger with our boat, and uh, I'm like, "We got to get it tight, and then like it'll release up in there." So we do that, and like I'm, I remember watching it, and then like I remember looking down as I'm going, and like the my I start taking off and like the ditch disappears and I'm like, <laughs> that, but I like went straight up because it was so weird. <laughs> it just <laughs> took you. Oh, <laughs> it's scary. And Hot I'm air a, balloon, dude. And I'm like afraid of heights, like not at joking at all. <laughs> so I'm like going straight up and I'm just like panicking and like I remember them just getting smaller and smaller. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like fuck, like this is not good. And then I had a, my phone, but it was like almost dead. And then I remember Lance and that. Uh, Lance and fly afterwards, like, but like, so I fly around for a bit, and like, as I'm flying, Corey Loeffler leaves me a message. He's like, "Yo, man, I'm, I'm at this baptism, and I hope you're not flying." Like, he's like, "I'm gonna pray for you." <laughs> he leaves this message, and I'm just like, and he's like, and then uh, of course I'm flying, but like, I'm, yeah. I'm not really flying because like it's so windy, you could not go against the wind. And so I'm just like sitting up there, just like hovering, and then I'm like watching the shoot, and then I'm like, well, I don't know if I turn into the wind if it's gonna collapse my shoot or not. So then like I start, I do that, and it doesn't. And then I'm like, as soon as I go with the wind, it's going like fast. So then I like I'm like panicking, and it's getting dark because it's after work. And oh uh, my gosh! So like, I luckily well. My answer is just going to follow me on his bicycle. And Sly's like, <laughs> like, I think we're going to need a truck. So, like, they're following me. And, like, so my house was on the north side of Thief River, just on the golf course right there on the river. And uh, I ended up going with the wind. And, like, I was like, oh, I got to find a field that ain't muddy. Because it was this time of year. It was muddy as mm -hmm. crap. And so, like, I'd come down in the land into a field going with the wind, which you're not supposed to do. And, like, <laughs> I'd, I'd get down there and realize how muddy it was. So then I'd go back up, and then, like, I ended up by the Agassiz Refuge. I got by Holt. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I remember landing, and I finally, when I decided to land, I'm, like, I just, like, hopped, and I didn't know you were supposed to flare the chute, like, to glide or, like, to kind of hover right before the ground and all this stuff. And, like, <laughs> I remember just landing, and, like, the chute flew in front of me and landed in front of me, and I, like, rolled over it, and I was just, like, Holy smokes. <laughs> like, what just happened? And, like, they came running over to me, and they, like, Lance was like, oh, my God, I thought you were dead. Like, <laughs> he's like, I'm so glad you're okay. Yeah, like, that, that would were, be my thought. Yeah, you know, I'm like, well, fuck, what do we do now? Because, like, we had this buggy, and then Sly's, <laughs> so then he went and got, like, his truck, and we took it back. And, like, I honestly had a adrenaline rush for I for, like, two days. Like, <laughs> I, but then I, it was so much fun. Like, I wrecked it a couple of times in the neighbor's fence God. and, like, all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. And, like, it was, but it was fun. I, <sighs> and I took it out to Colorado and I decided, I'm like, oh, I'm going to fly this thing around and look for elk and stuff. And uh, I flew it out there and I was not good. Like, I live in between two lakes and, like, the sheer winds and all this shit. Oh, and, like, mm -hmm. I almost crashed it. Like <laughs> I was taken off and there's this canal right borders my land and uh, you walk on it or whatever. And there's this family like watching me try to take off. Well, they just happened to be like in line where I'm going. Nah. And like I buzzed them. They were running like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was so funny because I was like, I'd never flown it again. I'm like, damn, this is weird. And then so I like got up above the trees and I didn't realize how many trees or power poles were right close to my house until then. <laughs> and I'm like, like this is not going to be good. And then I got over the lake and it got so windy because of the sheer winds and updrafts. And then I remember my buddy sending me a snap. He's like, look at this fucking idiot. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I sent him a snap or a picture back. I'm like, hey, and he's just like, oh, my gosh. And then the. I sold it after that because I was like, I don't want to end up in the trees and that thing. But it was, that thing was fun. Like, if I lived in Minnesota, I'd still have one. Oh, for really? Sure. Yeah, like, it, <laughs> down here, the air's so good. Yeah. And, like, there's nothing, I mean, there's just farm fields and stuff where if you're smart about it, you would never probably have a problem. But mm -hmm. in the mountains is not a good idea. Brody, fuck the... Fuck the motorcycle. We're getting parasailed. Oh, we're getting parasailed. <laughs> but you but can, we're putting a Liberty 600 in it. Something that's <laughs> something reliable. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> no, it that those things are cool. You like, can fly them around like a little plane. Like oh, you, you have total control pretty well, much, yeah, uh, I mean, unless like the you wind don't is have super to have strong. A for them, well, you? you're supposed to. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I never got one. I just went for it and like 
<laughs> if you have a person with you, you're supposed to have some kind of license and stuff. And like, well, it, just go alone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always took people, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, I took Lance, and he went. He was scared. He would never go in again. <laughs> like we almost hit some power lines and stuff. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then like, oh, it was wild. We tipped over when we landed. Like, it's just funny. It? <laughs> and he's not a small person either. So like. He's like, uh, it was, it didn't go up too quick with both of us. He was kind of <laughs> panicking. He was like, <laughs> I'm well, never doing that yeah, again, he says. Yeah. Old screw engines. <laughs> <laughs> old, it's an old fan cooled thing. Yeah. Like, you yeah. just, then the, I got a, ro- uh, the other one I got was a 583 two sh- uh, Bombardier motor, and that yeah. one was way better. Leon still has one. I actually, every time I come here, I'm like, I should go borrow Leon's parachute and buy it. <laughs> like, ah, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But it's those things were fun. Like I said, I I always wanted to be a pilot, so I that's why I bought it. I was oh, like, really? oh, this is the poor man's airplane. <laughs> yep, like, <laughs> you're, you're just your own pilot. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Like if I ever hurt anyone, it'd be just myself. So whatever. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I always wanted to go shoot like coyotes out of it. Yeah. But oh my god. I need to get one for the podcast. Huh? I could just fly oh. here. <laughs> And then fly home. <laughs> Where are you going to land it? Fucking 92 out here. And then pick you up for like, <laughs> drive you here. <laughs> well, you, yeah, and then it's funny because, like, you wrap the parachute up after you're done, and then you, like, I had this bag you could hang it on the frame, and, like, I would land, like, Sometimes it's like five miles from my house, and then I just cruise it down the dirt road. Yeah. <laughs> just just like, a little go kart looking thing. Like a, and people were just like, what? In With a big propeller on the back. Yeah. yeah. It is funny. I'd always mess, like, I'd fly down the river, and there'd be people on their boats, and I'd just be like, I was stupid with the thing. Like, I'd be, like, five feet off the water. <laughs> like, a sh- shoot would be down below the trees, and people were just like, what the? <laughs> Who is this crazy maniac yeah. flying it's, around us? Or, like, go to the softball fields. Yeah. Like, it is funny. Yeah. But it is fun. I had so much fun with that thing. He's going to start <laughs> shooting at us. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, that, was, that would be fun. fun to watch the 500 well, with or something. Yeah. So maybe when we're retired, we're, we'll get some and go watch the I-500. That would be a blast. They don't go very fast, though. Like, it only flows, like, 32 mile an hour knots through it. Yeah. So mm. it's not the fastest thing. Unless you go no. with the wind, then it goes pretty fast. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's those things are wild. If you ever get a chance to, like, go ask Leon. He'll take yeah. you up in his. He yeah. like, he's pretty good at flying his, too. But, uh they're kind of sketchy. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, they are. They, are. <laughs> they look sketchy. I always, I always told Lance I was gonna get him to fly it, and then I was gonna buy a, a skydiving parachute and jump out of it. But <laughs> holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Never did that yet, so <clears throat> there's still time. Huh? But yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I wrote that down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Oh, it's yeah, that thing is wild. So Wes, you took to uh, you took to racing to like the ice racing pretty fast at least. If you started in 2012, 2013, because then you went to the Sioux and you and Brian Dick won in 2015. Yeah, I, I mean, I always liked the ice racing better. Like, did you like it right away? Like, well, I mean, the fir- like at Detroit Lakes, I didn't know what I got my like. I went down the. I remember going down a straightaway, and I like halfway down the straightaway, I was letting off, and I'm like, what the. Fuck? Like, these guys are crazy. Like, and I, <laughs> my sled was so tight. Like, I couldn't hardly, my arms were so dead after that. <laughs> Running like, comp bars, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, like, well, yeah. <laughs> see, if Kirk told you to run comp yeah. bars, those, those actually work on the older sleds. Yeah. Like, on yeah. how the, the position of the sled is. Mm-hmm. You can run comp bars on, like, our 440 and our ZRT, but, like, not on these new ones. No. no. Like, I full on comp bars and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I had no idea what I was doing, like. And it's funny because, like, I rode uh, semi-pro the first year just because, like, I wasn't on the same level those guys were on. I never rode in the ditch or nothing even. And uh, I remember, like, Spencer Cadillac and Torgy and Peters, they're like, your slide works pretty good. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think it does. Like, <laughs> it's, it was so glued to the ice. Like, and then I would just be smooth on it. But, like, I couldn't ride it. There was no way I could have rode it for 10 laps like that. I would have three laps and I couldn't hold on. So I was just yeah. like, and I was in good shape then. And, uh, it was just funny, but I, the ice racing I think is technical. Like you have to be smooth. It's like a race in a race car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, you have to be consistent and smooth. And I think it's fun. And like, you get to pass people when you race heads up, like 
it's kind of boring when you're racing the clock and you're in the middle of nowhere by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like it's fun if you got snow dust to chase or something, but like if you're just by yourself, you're just like, and especially if stuff's not going good, like it's not as much <laughs> like you're just kind of, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, eh. but like the ice racing is fun because it's like a motocross race just with no jumps or, and, uh, or snow cross even where you can chase people or set them up or block pass them or whatever. So I had a lot of fun learning it and then kind of like I figured it out pretty quick and like I figured out a good setup pretty quick mm -hmm. and then I was like Simons was still racing and stuff and I was kind of him and I like he was always fast no matter whatever he did and uh I was figuring it out and then this the next couple years like 14 15 like I was riding a lot and like even the ditch stuff like I had it figured out pretty good and then like we went to the zoo that year and I had only been there the year before, and I raced it with some other, uh, God, Cody, I think his name was Brodeur, or he was fast back in the day. Mm. And then, but he kind of got mixed up with some kids, and, like, <laughs> <laughs> he got mixed up having kids and, like, partying too oh. much, and, like, sidetracked with that stuff, but... Uh, in 2014, that was when a lot of the cat guys tried racing the four-strokes out there. Yeah, and Simon's was riding a four-stroke. Yeah. Dick. Mm -hmm. And I was riding this two-stroke. Mine blew up. The crank blew up. So then, I mean, I hardly even got a ride that year there. And then the next year with Dick, we went there. And our sleds, like, I'd built, uh, for work there, we had built some one EFI. And I rode that thing a lot. We went to races, yada, yada. And uh, it was doing good. We did, like, a 500-mile test at by Fertile with one. Oh, because you guys had that practice track there. Yep. So we, well, this was on a lake. We just plowed a track. And then I think me and Zach and uh can't remember, maybe Langus and Lance. We just tagged. That's when I was like doing the testing stuff. So we, um, we <laughs> built the uh, track on the ice and then we did 500, like did a Sioux race in a day. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so like, for a test. Yeah, for a God test. God damn, that's like, wild. So it was awesome. And then. <laughs> We're like, fuck, this thing works good. Like, let's go build some suicide. So we built one for me and uh, Brian, and then I think Zach and maybe Simons, I think. Was that the year that you guys built all those those turnkey nope. Sioux sleds as well? Or? So this is the year before. Oh, okay. And uh, we went there, and our sleds didn't run or anything. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. No, like they didn't even start. Like, we were... We were scratching our heads, and we're like, oh, no, what did we get ourselves into? And it ended up being the throttle bodies when they were bored were twisted a little bit, and mm -hmm. the, the little flappers weren't timed right. But then uh, once we figured that out, like, our sleds were fast, and uh, we did good. Like, we were up front the whole time, or, like, every time we were on the sled, we were moving forward. Mm -hmm. And, like, you could pass people and everything else, good speed. But then, obviously, the snow came, and it got shortened, so it was, like, it was a win, but it wasn't the full win. So, like, I didn't – that was when they only had, like, the one camera set up. Yeah. And I wasn't there. Like, so was the snow that bad to where they, they I mean, had to cancel it or – Yeah, I mean, it was definitely safety, I think. Yeah. Like, it was – it sucks because you don't want a race to get postponed like that, but it, you don't want people to get killed or nothing yeah. either. Like, I think they could do some things there with the track around the outside that would maybe make it in those situations a little better, but there, you still got the people on the track that you got to worry about. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was good, but it sucked to win like that. And then like our sleds were fast and we built the same thing basically the next year. And, uh, me and Dick did it again with together and we were kind of the same results, but a, we never got to the end the year before, so, like, the rough suspension stuff we didn't have mm -hmm. kind of figured out. Oh. So, like, when it got to the end there, and AC's a weapon anyways, but he was – I couldn't ride with him in the rough stuff, so it, that kind of screwed us <clears> that <throat> year. And then, uh, like, the next couple years I rode with Zach, and we had good results, and we it was good. Uh, but, I mean, I've always liked the ice. I, I think it's fun because, like, I see someone hit the brakes, and then I drive it. Mm -hmm. 15 <laughs> yards faster than them. or like yeah. that's my thing is like i know and i ride the brakes way too much but yeah i was gonna like, say you've been <laughs> holding the brakes all the way down yeah. straight away <laughs> but like that's like i enjoy like all right that dude drove into that corner right there and he let off like i'm gonna drive it way farther and just go around the corner and i enjoy that but uh so it's 
Ice racing is fun though. I think it's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's what that's well. That's all <laughs> yeah. we do. I mean, yeah, we're in the same boat. I think it's. I don't know. There's nothing like it really. I mean, yeah. Even on the snow, it just gets bumpy and stuff. So you can't really race side by side and like. I mean, you can race four people like this year, especially at Pine Lake. You can have four people going through a corner at mm-hmm. the same time. Where at the snow, you're bouncing around, worrying about taking out each other out or whatever. And like, yeah. So that's I enjoy the ice racing a lot. And uh, it's not as hard on your body either. I mean, unless mm-hmm. you wreck, obviously it hurts. But yeah. Like you get banged mm-hmm. up yeah. pretty bad when you wreck on the ice, which you guys know too. But uh, I mean, that's my opinion on the ice is it's it's more racing, I guess. Mm-hmm. I like that, that and the point to point races. Like the, I think when I was younger, I liked the rough stuff. But even, I don't know, I never, some of them guys can just, go bonsai through that stuff and i can't like, yeah mm-hmm. like how how is it like because i've watched you and herf have enough battles in the mm-hmm. ditch like are how is it in the i don't go that fast in the ditch i've never went that fast like is are you comfortable going wide open in the blinding gray or is that where it kind of gets a little iffy iffy even for you no i mean there's times but that's well, kind of what i i enjoy I don't know if I enjoy it, but like I can mm. just mm-hmm. go full throttle. Like even I think the 500 and stuff like, yeah. cause I don't know. It's just weird. I can do the high speed chop and stuff like, and I've even since I started cross country, I've been able to do that better than like some people were. some people are real good at the rough stuff, like yeah. pounding and stuff where, or like the 10 mile laps. Like I, my body does not like that. Oh. Mm. No one does. I don't think, but like, even Zach, he's getting older now, and it bothers him, I think. But, like, some of these young kids, it ain't bothering them yet. But, mm-hmm. like, the point-to-point races, that's where I, like, I don't know, just fun. Because, like, and then you see a, you see a snow dust in front of you, and you're yeah. just like, mm-hmm. all right, let's go. Mm-hmm. I don't know, the the, the, the flat light, <laughs> and mm-hmm. you can't see nothing, that's mm-hmm. where I'm out. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people. I mean, 99% of the people, I mean, there's only, and I'm just saying, but, like, there's only a handful of people that'll go fast in that stuff, even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you wreck once in that stuff like that, and it's yeah. like it's hard to go do it again. But yeah. I I don't know for some reason like I enjoy it. Like, <laughs> yeah. <I'll>, screw that. <laughs> like I'll, I mean it's wild. Like I've even like at the five hundred or stuff. Like people will be following the same trail, and I'll just you can just pull out beside them and just wide open, and then you're just right. Like it's <laughs> funny because they're like kind of scared, like you can tell they're ner- not mm-hmm. comfortable and you just wide open right by them and they try to keep up and there ain't no way. In hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but, uh, I don't know there. It is sketchy. I mean, you wreck hard when you wreck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys know how it Big is. Big time. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. This yeah, guy knows. Yeah, cool. especially. I've been waiting for a 500 so I can redeem myself oh. for that one. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, when stuff goes bad, it goes bad. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. it was going good for a long time. <laughs> then, yeah. And then it went bad. And then it went bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was going really good at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, that's where I wish I would have seen. I heard, and I seen it a little bit with DJ and Simons, but like, I heard uh, Deardall was nuts back in the day in that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. he would just go wide open and he would wreck and he'd get back up and go wide open again. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So. But his sleds work good, it sounds like. Where and he wasn't even really one to, like, just totally shit launch the approaches. No. Like, mm-hmm. like, si- like Simons was known for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, Brian wasn't really shit launching him. He was just consistent. He was jumping him, but just super consistent. Yep. So. And I think, like, Simons, he was just wild anyway. But, like, <laughs> I think that was just this. He was just a wild man. But, yeah. like, I think you can break. Like, there's more, more of a chance for you to wreck into that hole on the other side that you don't see but like simon's would just jump over him yeah like, yeah you so would hope he was going fast oh, enough and far yeah. enough to like, clear all that shit and that's what he always said he's like you can tell when people let off because there's bumps before it approach so then i would just hit it wide open and i'd jump over their holes mm-hmm. so like he was just wild like everyone called him the white devil for a reason like he's nah. nuts. <laughs> but he's uh i mean there was no one jumping stuff like he did ever. no but that's unreal yeah, no, I'm not about that life. Nope. <laughs> no, it's it's hard to do that. I don't oh, care. Yeah, yeah are, there's yeah the commitment yeah, of just yeah. but saying fuck it the, the whole miser- day. I didn't say the most miserable thing is hitting that case oh, area and not clearing it. Yeah, <laughs> you land right out in the pounded shit. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> handlebars hit yeah. you square in the sternum. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it's happened enough times where you'd rather just fucking send it over. <laughs> oh, and that's you hear stories about like in the two thousands, those guys would hit stuff wide open. Oh like, yeah. And then like if there was cattails, they would know that it was soft, so they would just jump and land in that <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> Where like, how do you think that's okay? Like, <laughs> I'm always afraid of hitting a rock or something. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or like a big log or something. So, no, that's the ditch racing is pretty wild. I sometimes I wish, like I said, I never watched them back in the day, and I mm-hmm. wish I would have because I think it'd be fun to follow and watch. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the snow dust part, I don't, I mean, there's times you just, you're just watching someone else's helmet bounce across up mm. above the like we we told the story on here once oh, where yeah. uh, uh-huh. you had herf behind you yeah and you played the bobble oh, yeah. and the and <laughs> dragged the brake on him <laughs> <laughs> oh i do that to him all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny cuz like if you're well jeff olson at Articat, he would always do that to me when we were test riding he'd be like B- bouncing around and then like just hit the brakes and you think he's getting squirrely but he's still wide open so then next thing you know he's a quarter mile ahead of you and you're like what the fuck <laughs> I, well, like, did i hit, I miss did, it did oh, i yeah. not hit it what, so, the, what, what then, happened here oh, so i would do i do that to zach when we're racing in the day. <laughs> 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 or anyone it's just funny because like you can't not hit the brakes because you unless you know like you're in that spot and you remember it but like otherwise you're just like well there's probably something here. I better slow down. Yeah. And then you look back and they're half a mile ahead behind you. You're just laughing, but <laughs> pretty funny. So that's, it's fun to do that kind of stuff. But, mm-hmm. but yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, you kicked, yeah, you kicked ass in the, on the ice, like a lot of pro open wins on that sled you had built. That thing was a ripper. Yeah. And then, uh, quite a few pro stock wins too. You we won a lot down in Park Rapids. Yep. You got a few of them nice Park Rapids neon sign trophies. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, it's, uh, that's, like I said, I, the rougher stuff, Zach's always laid it to me or Simon's or whatever, but on the ice and the point to point races, like, I mean, there's been a lot of wins come there. And then, like, that mod sled I had, I, that thing, I had it working perfect. Like, that's after we did those Sioux sleds. And mm-hmm. that one I had, like, I had learned some stuff from some old timers too, like, on, resistance and all this stuff like and i decided i'm going to build my sled that is a weapon and that thing i mean i think <laughs> you just get lucky sometimes too with mm-hmm. like a set of pipes that are yeah. absolutely perfect or whatever but i and i think now there's guys like bunky their sleds getting fast again but like for a while oh, yeah. like at pine lake the one year on gps my sled that sled was like 122 or something mm-hmm. and damn it, and they probably that was with going with the wind or something but mm-hmm. like there for a long time you if it didn't, but it blew up a lot too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there was times we'd be deer all. I mean, at deer at Pine Lake, I'd go and they'd blow up on the first long straightaway. We'd come back, we'd throw totally different cylinders on it and like rebuild it, and then it just handled good too. Though, like I could drive it wherever I wanted. Mm-hmm. I think honestly, I could go get that sled and win the open class no problem on it still. Well, I keep asking mm-hmm. you for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't let someone else beat you on your own sled. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like let someone kill you with your own gun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you might not as well going to fly. If I had a wife, you could sleep with her, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've asked Wes a couple times, like, yeah, can I get that mo- old mod sled from you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if I'll ever ride it again on the ice, but it... I mean, that thing has so many, the, I'm more afraid of it breaking, like, or the crank, because it never had a crank put in it, mm. or, like, it ate about 50 pistons, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I was going to put a crank in it the last year I raced it, but then uh, I took it all apart to put it, a new crank in it. The crank I had was the wrong one, so I had to put it back with old <laughs> shit. <laughs> but it's funny, because I, and then I think at Pine Lake that year, I beat everyone by, like, five minutes or something. It was some, cra- or three minutes or whatever, but it was, like, it's like, ah, maybe I'll just leave this crank in there. <laughs> but it, uh, that sled was a good, that's a good sled. It's won a lot of races. I had a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. Uh, mm. <laughs> God dang it. Maybe one day it'll get pulled off. I thought, it, I even asked Skadoo when I started racing for them. I was like, well, I'm not going to build a mod sled. Can I just put yellow graphics on that thing? And he's like, <laughs> Call it a skidoo? Yeah, absolutely not. I'm like, no one will know the difference yeah. anyways. Like, yeah. <laughs> it would have been funny to do that. On the results paper, all it will say is skidoo. You could have yeah. them say skidoo. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's all that matters. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Be. Well, you maybe you could get double contingency then, too. <laughs> yeah. Done, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Except for Clenny, probably wouldn't. Have, he was probably mad at me still, so he probably wouldn't have. But yeah. 
<laughs> is no that it's pretty funny because like the sleds now even that 15 that we won with i've been trying to buy it back from uh forever and i glad he's finally gonna sell it to me but like he's like oh i want to test against it before i give it to you to see if our new sleds are slower and i'm like okay i guess well whatever so whenever they get that done then hopefully i'll get that thing back home and put it on the shelf mm. but it's uh i don't know why that i think there was like some stuff with throttle bodies and stuff too there mm. but they and we did a lot of work like i said on that mod sled of mine and then that sous sled i did a lot of stuff too to it that I don't think anyone else really does to the newer ones that that made a difference, but like mm. what? I <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like what? <laughs> Give us the secret. <laughs> you gotta learn that stuff the hard way. Yeah. yeah, but like when you and when you and Herf won it, that was the in 2018. Yeah, that was the first year of that new pro the new snowcross sled you guys ran. You were well, on the- yeah. I mean, it was the same sled as our 15, though. Mm. Oh, just different. I don't think body even, works. Yeah. Oh. We just had the different uh plastics on it. Oh okay. like a light we had like a carbon fiber hood on it or something, but it was nothing crazy different. Oh like, really? I think maybe a little bit different suspension setup and then that sled was fast that year. I mean it ran good, but uh I mean Zach he just rode the hell out of it at the end. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he earned that we earned that one for sure. Like I mean AC was right there with them the whole time, but we had our suspension working pretty good that year. But yeah. I think the other times we kind of had our suspension set up just a little off. Like the year before that, we got second. Or we got second two years in a row there. Me and Zach and then Brian and I did. And we just kind of, when it got rough, it wasn't good. Mm. And then, uh, even watching Bunky sled this year, after my sled broke down, like everyone else's sleds worked pretty good through the rough, but Bunky's sled works good. Mm-hmm. Like, And I... Alex Satine, I think, like, and some of the other players, guys, they probably have the same setup, but there was something about Punky sleds watching it, and it could have been Ryder, too, where AC was going, but, like, his sled, like, I mean, even if you watch, it's hard because you're racing or whatever, yeah. but I, just watching from the sidelines, he, either the lines he was picking or mm-hmm. their sled works that much better in the bumps, but. Yeah, I was, I was watching, and I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, <I> <laughs> but, yeah, like, some of the lines he was Pay, taking is like i i can't take that one like no. mm-hmm. it's just i'll get like a, a weird swap taking yep. that line or something yeah i mean and he's driving straight wide open into those bumps yeah where mm-hmm. everyone else is kind of i mean like the bauer sled all those guys i mean they're all and you guys like everyone sleds fast but they're at the end when it gets rough and if it didn't get rough it wouldn't have i don't think it would have been like it was but yeah like the last 50 even after they plowed it that last little bit and then the last 50 laps it turned into a whole different animal mm-hmm. like that's when he kind of started putting uh, time on everyone but um they definitely have a good setup in there like they'd be crazy to change anything they have on their sled I'd, yeah yeah i'd go there i'd go right and ride that sled tomorrow and not even hesitate <laughs> i wouldn't change a thing on it yeah. no mm-hmm. but no everyone else has to change their yeah, stuff I mean, to compete with them now yeah i mean everyone and hatin's had a good setup this year too i think but they had i mean I don't know what happened there. I think they had some spark plug issues, but um, like even the guys riding their sled, even if it's the same setup sled, it just didn't look as good when they were riding compared to AC, Mm -hmm. which that's kind of might be where AC is just picking different lines, I guess. But uh, a Sue is a whole different animal. I mean, you got to have a little bit of luck or a lot of bit of luck too. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a lot of luck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything's got to go right. And then you got to have some luck. Like, yeah. It's a hard one to win. Like, I don't know. It's it's crazy to see, like, Bunkies, how many times they've won it, or Davidson, or even some of these other guys that have won it a handful of times. It's pretty hard to do that. Mm-hmm. It's one of those races that's like a – you win that one, and you definitely earned it. But Yep. Been close. <laughs> been close. <laughs> yeah. Proof I mean, right there that it's – they've been close. We were close. <laughs> but even getting – I mean, getting top five, there's nothing to – yeah. I yeah. mean, honestly, I mean, that's I, what I'm shooting. Well, for. yeah. In my like, lifetime, top five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've, yeah, we talked about that before. Like when you brought home that trophy, like mm-hmm. this third place trophy would be a statement in a lot of people's life. But yeah. for a team that's already won it a handful of times, a third is like, God damn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shucks. Well, and that's, no matter what race you want to go to, you want to win. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's a, as soon as you lose that desire, you might as well not go, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I would never, 
if you get second, I'd rather be last place than second. Yeah. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Yep. Oh, like, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. Yeah. That's any race. If I lose by a quarter second, I'd rather be last place. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. there's something I didn't do that I could have done uh, to win. At least second, you get a little bit of money. Well, I mean, yeah, that's always nice. But honestly, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. losing by a little bit just sucks. It's, like, worse because you – I've lost races, like, even hill climbs or any of this stuff, and you just – like, I don't sleep after that, like, oh, for yeah. weeks even. Sometimes mm-hmm. I wake up and I just, like, think about it, and I'm like, if I would have done this, like, I would have won. So that's, like, you have to move on from it. But it's just like, oh. That's I've had three three Pine Lakes and three Sioux oh. where it's like that, <laughs> where it's been weeks of just, like, if I could have done this, if I would have done that. Yep. So, but same boat. Just learn from it and go back again and give her hell. That's all you can do. I slept like a baby after that third place at the Pine Lake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might have had a concussion, but I slept yeah. like a baby. Yeah. 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 Drooling funny. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was awesome. <laughs> Love that third place. <laughs> no, I, that's nothing wrong with that. It's just, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just hard. That's uh, how I've been growing up is it's like, I don't, oh, I just want to win. Yeah. But And I haven't won everything, but it's like, that's all I want to do is win. Right? But What about the Iron Dog? What was... What were you had you had some tough luck at the Iron Dog, so you didn't yeah. really get the full experience of no. And that's I, th- I was talking to Alex at and I stopped by his house last night for a little bit, and uh, the guy I raced it with, like I don't know if there was just some uh, personal things going on with him at the time or what, but like our sleds weren't ready when they were supposed to be, and like some other stuff, and like I showed up, the sleds were supposed like, and I committed to doing it, and it was like I need to show up and just. I'm going to show up right after the 500 and we need to ride for that week before. And I need to figure out how to, and I was testing around here. Like I'd go ride in thief river every, every couple of nights a week, mm-hmm. like at nighttime and ride the rivers and all that stuff. And the riding part isn't the issue. I mean, those guys ride good, but I can ride a snowmobile, but <laughs> like the, it was just, I showed up and our sleds hadn't what? been touched since they left thief river. And I'm like, and, like, I didn't freak out or nothing, but I was just like, all right, let's get our sleds ready. So we did all that. And then uh, just, like, he, the those guys, they run a little different suspension setup. I wish I would have brought my suspension set up. And then, like, I was worrying about next day in springs and all this stuff. And then, I mean, we, <laughs> the one, th- one thing that was crazy, like, the morning of the race, like, you, they start wherever they start. And that year, I think there was low snow and, uh, Wasilla or Big Lake, wherever they normally started. And so we were starting in a different spot. And the guy I was racing with, he's like, his uh, girlfriend, she didn't want to drive the truck to the from the start back home. So we, he's like, wow, well, fuck, we'll just ride our sleds to the starting line. And it was a fucking blizzard. <laughs> and I'm like, last thing I want to ride this thing is to the starting line right now. Like, <laughs> so yeah. like we show up on our, we're the only idiots rolling under <laughs> on our starting. And like, it's just stuff like that. And then. We got going, and, like, we were riding all right. Uh, I just told him, I was like, I haven't rode up here at all, so I'm going to just follow you. Like, and he's done it however many times. And uh, it was, I mean, we were riding a decent pace. And, like, it's funny because the first, well, the, it wasn't funny, but, like, <laughs> can, he tipped over once on the river, and, like, I thought he broke his windshield and stuff, but it was just, like, a little air deflector that mm-hmm. broke off. And then I uh, pulled up beside him, like, hey, you okay? And then. I think it's that day or the next day he got stuck a couple times like which i mean that happens but it was just funny because i'd like but the one time he just augured her into the trees and he like buried her and i'm just watching it i'm like oh no and like <laughs> this, this, this isn't uh, gonna be fun no i'm like yeah. what's go? what do you just do that for like that's not good <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so then uh some players team helped us get unstuck and that was the year uh I think Acklestead and that Nick, they ran into each other or something, or two guys ran into each other and hurt each other. They were out, and we, uh, but it's funny because, like, we got to the one village, and, like, when we were cruising, we weren't going, like, they don't go, they can't go race speed because their sled will break. Like, Mm. you can't do our speed down here the whole Mm -hmm. time, and I think they probably do in the other races they do go fast, but I haven't been up there, so I don't know, but I know they can ride snowmobiles good. They got more miles than anyone, but, uh, so we were riding, and I'm like, I'm just like joy riding, and I seen like a caribou herd and like some <laughs> no. buffalo and shit, and yeah, no one else seen those things. I'm like, we got to the, 
the first night and I'm like talking to the guys and they don't really know me, but I'm like, Hey, did you guys see those caribou? And they're like, what? <laughs> there's a car I'm like, there's thousands of caribou. You didn't see the fucking thing. <laughs> like, and they're just like, what are you doing when you're racing? And I'm like, well, it's <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just used to going a little different. Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Should be going a little fast. This well, thing's tuned on 87 on. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's funny. And then, like, I don't know, the guy, he he hadn't been riding his whole, that first night, his whole hand was a blister. Like, I'm oh, like, my God. Like, I'm not shitting you. The whole hand, I was just Ugh. like, and my ass got, like, chafed. And I'm like, because <laughs> nice. I, it was, like, snowing and wet and, like, just swamp ass yeah. the whole yeah. day. Like, it's not oh good. my god! So I'm like putting Vaseline on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so like, the first day was kind of a funny deal. And then the second day we were doing, or I can't remember how many days we did it, but second day or third day we were ripping. We were passing some people or whatever, and like it started out. His he's pulled over and his front track shock had broken like an eyelet on it. Oh yeah, so it pulled apart. Well then we. <laughs> <laughs> this was when it kind of got frustrating because, like, we, I'm like, well, we'll take your shock out. And he, like, rolls his out his tool kit. And I'm like, he didn't have the tools we needed, really. Like, oh, shoot. So I'm like, I was using a screwdriver, jamming it between the nut and the front arm. And then I was using pliers. And I got the shock out. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> like, and then our plane, uh, James Spikes, he flew for us and he's good shit. And, uh, he comes banking over us, and I, we had a sled on the side, so we were, like, pointing at the suspension, and he circled around. And then he went to the, I can't remember what town it was, but we had to go away still to get to him. And then uh, we went, we were just outside this fuel stop, so we ride in there with no front track shock and his, get fuel. <laughs> we go out of that sh thing, and, like, all of a sudden, my rear skid just goes, like, down, and I'm like, Mother I think my shock just blew out. But it wasn't. <laughs> it was the rear scissor arm broke. Oh, and like, geez. so I'm like, I'm like, fuck, like, what do we do now? So then I rode and it was like riding on the track. So I wouldn't go super fast, but I still, I'd go like 60 or whatever. But then <laughs> as this happens, then he's like way up in front of me because he didn't stop or look back for a while. And I get to him and then uh, I'm like, well, you got to ride him back at me in case my track rips now. So then he's doing that. <laughs> and then uh, his sled went to one cylinder and I'm like. <laughs> So then he disappears, and I'm, like, looking back. I'm, like, where the f I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going slow as shit. Like, what the hell? So then he finally rolls up on one cylinder, and I'm, like, well, did you check the spark plugs? We check everything, and it was just burned down. So then uh, we got to that town, and we put, like, all the suspension parts in my sled, and then he wanted to tow to the next town on the river, and I was just like, I don't know. I've never towed a sled that far, but, like, that's a long way. Yeah. Like, 100 miles. I'm like, I don't think that's good. But so, anyways, we go to go tow, and, like, you go down on the big river there. As soon as I got on the big river, I go, and, like, I'm not even a quarter mile my sled went to one cylinder. So, I just mm. made a big loop and <laughs> <laughs> came back to the thing there. And I'm like, no, nah, we're done. Like, this is stupid. Like, I didn't come here just to finish. Yeah. Like, so, we flew out to Fairbanks that night, and then – uh one cylinder sled towing a one cylinder yeah, sled. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> Can't go that far doing that. No, no. We didn't have, I think it'd be different if you had motor parts in the plane and stuff, but we didn't have any cylinders or none of that stuff. I'm like, this is all we're going to do is spend a bunch of money and not accomplish anything. Like, yeah. So that's kind of, I just told him, like, I want to get out, out of here and go back. I think the race was in War Road that weekend or something, and I came back and did good. But <laughs> it was, uh, it was just funny. I'm like, it was, I would do it again, but I, you got to have, the right partner and the sled set up and I would go probably test a little more maybe with mm -hmm. them up there just to get comfortable with the sled and like the GPS and stuff. But I think you either, I don't know, I was talking to Alex even about that last night and I said, I think you either got to go up there and do like the trail class the year before or else you got to just do it with someone that does it every year Yeah, and then hope that they can ride a snowmobile just fast and not have any problems. So I'd do it again. I just got to have the right partner. And I mean, it takes a lot of time and money to do that too. So, I mean, these other guys go up there and like Dorns and stuff, they did pretty good this year. So oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and they've done it a handful of times and done good. So, yeah. I, I think it's possible. I just, I'm not, I don't want to go there just to do it. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't well, want to, that's a lot of miles just to say you did it. Yeah. So, Jesse Holstrom's up there right now. Yeah. He got, 
What's he doing? He went racing up there. Went and did a cross country race up in Alaska. Oh, I'll yeah. be damned. Yeah. Right. How'd he do? Yeah, like third, I think. Yeah, no, I think cool. third, yep. No, so cool. he did all right. Oh, yeah. He, but it's different up there. I mean, I think the way they race their tracks and stuff, too, you kind of just, you can go through like little different trails off the side and stuff. I don't, it's not like here where you got to, or I don't know for sure, but you don't got to stay between the markers and mm, stuff. Sure. So I think it's kind of point the point, but you can kind of take whatever. And like someone like Jesse going up there. Yeah. I mean, those guys got their shit. They mm-hmm. put thousands of miles on this year. Like yeah. you're not going to go up there and it's going to be hard to beat him. Like Kirk and all these other guys have tried to go up there in the past. And like mm-hmm. Davis does good up there, but he's from up there. But, uh, it's hard to go beat someone in their home. Game. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's, but he, I guarantee he had fun. He's young. So mm-hmm. it's good he did it. And it didn't get a ride any ditch races around here this year. Yeah. So, right. yeah. but, uh, Corey Davis coming around for the next I 500. I don't know. I mean, he, I think he always wants to, but he's got a kid and business and everything mm-hmm. like his wife. And he wants to do the iron dog or I don't know if he's doing it this year with anyone or not, but he's always talked about, well, we should do the iron dog next year, but that'd be a good partner mm-hmm. for you. Oh, yeah. he, yeah. He's, I mean, one of the best up there. So it's like, he'd be good, but at the same time, it, you'd be relying on him and his dad to do a lot of the work. So yeah, and I, and I don't know. So we'll see. Hopefully, one day I could do it with someone like him, or even Nick or Tyler or someone mm-hmm. like or more. Yeah, than, there's a handful of guys that. And Skidoo puts a lot into it too. So like, yeah, Sk- Skidoo puts a lot of effort into it. Yep. So that's kind of, but I'm getting up there in age too, where it's like, got to do it before it's too late. So Forty plus know. class here pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I don't need to do that. <laughs> That'll just make me feel older. Yeah. <laughs> nah. To put you in a class? Yeah, like yeah. we said, you and Tate and, and a- AC and... Shit, last time I rode around there with Tate and he's riding a 40 plus, he's going in to get change his sled and all this shit. Well, <laughs> I got in trouble for riding around with him. I'm like, what the fuck? He's just riding say, around. Yeah, the last yeah. time you were riding 40 plus, you were just diving in behind yeah. him. You, you jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to ride around with the old guys a little yeah. bit. But, no, it's... I, I watched that happen <laughs> on, the, on the back stretch there. Yeah. I was like, watch, and I was like, he's going to jump on the course. <laughs> 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 oh, I've d- I used to do that to Lance when he would be racing in the semi-pro class. I'd jump in behind him and then I'd just start bumping him in the straightaways or something. <laughs> and he'd think it was someone else racing him and then he'd realize it was me. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> At least get in front of me. Let me draft you. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it's funny. Yeah. I don't know. But that, it's hard if you don't. I mean, at these races, there's nowhere else to test. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. You're, if you're not messing with someone that you don't know or like causing a, if you're not <laughs> causing the results change or something, I think it's, you're better off to let people ride a little bit. That way you can, uh, it's safer than someone going out there on a setup that doesn't work and then wrecking, you know, but, and it probably makes for better racing really. <laughs> the, <laughs> people jumping in on the course, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I guess I mean, so. You could yeah, say yeah. that. No, I mean, there's bad things about it. <clears throat> you got to be able to ride your slide a little bit. Yeah. Uh, off the track <laughs> yeah whatever yeah it is yeah. different someone like you doing it well compared to someone like me just jumping in there <laughs> trying to follow you during yeah. A, yeah. like a qualifier all, i'd be all game on i think it'd be funny <laughs> yeah it'd be like a new obstacle pine yeah. legs practice track this year we were out friday or whatever before the race and i'd just getting that xc kind of half ass running you mm-hmm. know after i had all them rpm problems i'm fucking winding it on the straights and then i'd let off and her finale would just whoa <laughs> right past me and he'd hit the corner just pitched and i was like i'm not gonna try that and then on the straight so i'd catch up catch to him you. and then and then he'd fucking i'd let off and he would do the same shit and i'd like slowly work on him a little bit and i was like herf this is a practice track this isn't <laughs> fucking legit shit but i suppose he was out there working on corning cornering yeah. and i was just fucking <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, so, those sleds are kind of slow, so I don't know if. <laughs> That's what I thought when I was fucking <laughs> dialing in the ninety-eight, no, <laughs> <I can laughs> working on her. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, hope, so I hope he hears that, and then he'll just get pissed at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a softy, anyways. I wouldn't yeah. be too afraid of him. No. <laughs> 
So there was a, there was a picture of us at the the Alexandria ski hill race on the starting line. Aaron Christensen giving you uh-huh. the finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what what was said before that? I don't know. I think I told him first one on the top or something. I think I was talking shit. To him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't even remember. It's funny though. It's funny that the photographer guy got. That yeah, I got a picture of just AC, just full middle yeah. finger yeah. right to West. I think right I was trying him. to mess with him, get in his head a little bit, but it doesn't work too good with him. But that is a pretty funny picture. I there was another picture. I uh, I don't know. I probably have it somewhere. But uh, when I was first going, we were at like Wilmer and Chad Lee, and I was behind him. But like I. would some reason I couldn't get around him. I caught him, but then I couldn't get around him because he was kind of like blocking me, and I get frustrated, <laughs> like mad. And like Chad Lee, and obviously I don't know any. I would never want to fight him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like if you've seen the dude, his arms are like the yeah. size of your legs, and like he's strong, and he's like I've heard stories about him fighting, and I'm like, ah, he's the last person I want to fight. <laughs> but like, it's funny because we were going down a straightaway, and I finally got up beside him. And the photographer, whoever it was, like I kicked, I was kicking on his side panel going down <laughs> nah. the thing so like he would get out of my way because I was so mad. But like, and I became friends with him after that anyways, but he didn't even care because like, he was just like, ah, that was awesome. And I'm like, ah, that was probably the wrong person to do that. To. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, most people, I, it's like, well, whatever. But I think he's pretty tough, dude. You wouldn't want to fight him. Pretty. Thank God you thought that was awesome. You didn't want to <laughs> yeah, kick like, my ass. Yeah, like afterwards you're just like, ah, is he gonna come over here and beat me up now? Yeah, or, yeah. like it is pretty funny. I thought your uh, your four stroke story because you tried you tried the four stroke at Pine Lake there. Yeah, you you wrote mine and you're like, I'm gonna try one. Yeah, and so you you got to and you set the fastest lap time on it, but then you were actually you started derailing the track, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean. I tried to set it up like my two-stroke was set up, and I didn't test enough with it. I mean, I kind of, I actually relied on you a lot for, like, clutching and <laughs> stuff. Like, it's funny. like, I told him, I'm like, I'll try this stuff, and if it's faster, I'll tell you, and vice versa. Like, and I pretty much, motor-wise, it was, like, clutching was stock, I think, or I think that's kind of what you had, too. I don't know, but the four-stroke was fast, but it was... It was a hit. And that's the year they put, like, 50 corners right in front of everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was mm-hmm. like... <laughs> like, because I, I was fast everywhere else, but then the it would just de- it was something with the way I had my rear skid set up. It was trying to derail too, but that thing like it was definitely fast, but it. But didn't. you weren't used to the the heavy throttle. No, fuck no. Yeah, like, oh, like <laughs> yeah, it's retarded. Like it's heavy, and the throttle was heavy, and I was riding a lot that time, like a year. But I remember going down the straightaway. Like my thumb was getting tired, so I would I just jam my elbow <laughs> into my stomach, and then I would just pull it like full throttle with my fist, and I'm like trying to, and then I was going with my like, left hand, like, <laughs> the reach around with the left. Yeah. That's yeah. a risky yeah, one. Yeah, that's a different oh, reach around yeah. than what I do. Oh uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it was it was stupid. I'm like, what am I doing riding this thing? So I I parked it after that. I should have yeah. kept it because it the next year it would have been. Uh, good to have yeah mm. i mean those or even i rode uh you rode abe's i yeah. rode abe's at that night wash and like you be, they they had to make up a new rule after that weekend too what was that uh because uh you didn't race it in the qualifier oh yeah oh. and so you just jumped into the, Last the yeah you mm-hmm. just jumped in the back row and they said no now you have to race the slide you qualify huh. i didn't qualify so but yeah yeah so that's why they made yeah, up that rule yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> no that's and I didn't want to mess, because, like, I told Abe, I'm like, hey, can I ride this thing? And Stevie and them were nice enough to let me ride it. But, like, I told him, I was like, I don't want to ride it before you race, because I don't want to wreck it or mm-hmm. burn your brakes up or whatever. So then I just rode what he had set up. And it was, or I mean, I got, like, fourth, I think. But yep. it was, like, the only reason it worked is because of the water. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, that was the year it was the worst water yeah. out mm-hmm. there, because it was, oh. like, two or three inches across the whole lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, even the belt was slipping on that thing. So it was, like, yeah. It was the uh, only reason I did it was because I knew it was going to be wet. I mean, I wore muck boots and I was pouring water out of my muck boots. Oh, <laughs> God. Came, Damn. came by the mechanics area, splashed oh, yeah. all them. I splashed Todd. <laughs> splashed Todd. <laughs> I think Herf, Herf, Herf was broke down yeah. there on like the last <laughs> lap. You came by and just <laughs> like, slid into him. Like, it was just like riding a jet ski around the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I just remember Todd 
and then I was actually going to pick Herf up and to give him a ride in. But then uh, <laughs> I seen Todd over there, and I'm like, oh, you guys are done. So I just blasted the <laughs> ski sideways right at him, and, like, this covered both of them. They, they were just like, – and Todd was there, like, in his sweatpants and sweatshirt. I'm like, ah, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the – that year, the – like you said, the mechanics, like, I – they were on the right side, so I would just roost them every time. And, like, people started running every time. It's so funny. <laughs> but I guess it wasn't very nice. <laughs> is, that's, I don't know, it's just boring riding around. I I know during during that race, like, me and you battled for a little bit, but then we fueled and we were kind of separated because my belt was slipping so yeah. bad. And, like, I just remember going through that race just like, all right, I'm I'm ready to be done. Like, yeah. mm, I'm, in, I'm in fifth. This is what I'm getting. Just like, cut I'm, it short. I'm ready. <laughs> Yeah, that's that water. I mean, that's the part about it. And like, Nato Wash isn't too technical usually. Like, so you, there's nothing to really gain on anyone. If you have a fast sled, then you're pretty dialed. Yeah, like, like I was, I was number one qualifier that morning going into the final. But then the lake just turned changed, to, changed yeah. so much because mm-hmm. it froze up a little bit that morning to where yep. it was still pretty frozen. But the day before it just went to was water. a mess though, or like it just started getting messy. I think, and then it froze a little bit. Yeah, and then that's why I decided on that. I'm like, it's just going to be even worse. Yeah, that was the same the same Saturday when you get grabbed my arm oh, yeah. after we took off on the pro <laughs> open start. <laughs> and I could hear you coming alongside me just singing along and then just come up and grab the back of my arm. <laughs> so I, d- I did that to my dad this year did in you? the classics class yeah. at Nato Wash. Yeah. And he said it didn't spook him, though. Oh. But. Did it spook you when I creeped up on you? And- no, Finally. no, I knew you were behind me. Okay. And so <laughs> I, I was just surprised, like, God, dude, you're faster than me, but, like, you're just drafting up on me yeah, and yeah. caught me. But, yeah, I was I was just pissed, like, God, he's faster, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, yeah. they're the same speed. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, because <laughs> right when you got next to me, we were just locked in. Yeah. And well, that's that's when you get that side draft. Going yeah, pretty yeah. much. That's yeah. what I did to you. As soon as you got up next to me, I just kind of tucked in right next to you and but, yeah. held it. Trying to get as close as possible to him, but then it was a left-hander, and he was on the inside. Oh. So I just kept hugging him towards the yeah. I was going to let you go. I was like, I need, why are you crowding me? Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm letting you go. Just yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> wide open. Yeah, I was wide open, too. But me and Ben York basically did the same thing the day before. Yeah. And so, yeah, he... I, I crept up on him, though, and we looked at each other, racing next to yeah. each other. Oh, I thought that was a blast. But <laughs> that was so fun. That was the most hugging fun. Him, hugging him towards the bank, and then finally he just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm getting, we're getting close to this turn. I'm letting you go, brother. I'm letting you go. Yeah, that's that was funny. fun. Nah, that's funny to do that to people. I always yeah. like doing that. Well, you switched to Skidoo West. Um, kind of why why the, the switch? Like, I mean... Because you were at... You said you were at Polaris for 04, 05, all yeah. the way up till 2022? Uh, Cat, yep. Or, and, uh, oh, yeah. What the yep. hell? What did oh, I that's say? Right. You said Polaris. Polaris. Oh, yeah. man. You're just thinking about Polaris. What are you riding next year? <laughs> yep. Cardi <laughs> Cat. Oh, okay. Yep. Are you sure? Yep. <laughs> I just filled out the resume today. All right. Yep. Whatever. No, is, I, it, is it going to be worth it to put in the resume for a new sled? Why? Okay. What do you mean? Well, they're the same thing, and they're slow as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd hope they'd make some changes. You could get another Yamaha last year. They yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There we go. Well, like the the four stroke I have right now is a 2019, so this will be like the last year I'll be able to race this one, and then we'll see what we want to do after that. But it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do after 2025 for if they're going to continue making four strokes or not. Yeah, so. it'll be interesting to see. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. What was the, what was the question? Yeah. Uh, why why you switched from Arty Cat to Skidoo? I think, like, I don't know. Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons. Like, I think that's kind of when all the Textron stuff was going on, and budgets get cut every year. And like, I mean, I didn't have to switch. Obviously, Cletty would have always took care of me. I mm-hmm. think, and um, there's no hard feelings. I mean, Cletty's kid went. And, Derek, he came and worked for me that next summer. Yeah. And I try to get him every summer. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so I think what the nail in the coffin for me was when the Brian Dick, the day Brian Dick mm-hmm. got let go. Oh, That sure. was like a mm-hmm. gut punch. And like before that, they had done uh, Roger and all these other guys. And like it just didn't feel right to me. And I, like I think maybe emotions took over more than anything, but like. And there was nothing getting changed, and we didn't have the 
uh, I mean, our sleds handled good, but they weren't the fastest. Mm-hmm. Or Like, everyone else, and I'm not trying to talk bad about Articat or anyone at Articat, because, like, no one ever has done me wrong there. Or Like, uh, I have a lot of respect for all those people, but it's, like, Textron overall was it's not letting everyone do the things they wanted to do or mm-hmm. needed to do. And I, they're still, I mean, her and them are still doing good and their sleds are good. And, but it's, it's still like, what's their end goal? Like no one knows yeah. like, mm-hmm. nope. to be honest. I, and that, and not just me wondering that or you guys, but like, don't matter what races you're at right now, that's what everyone asks. Like mm-hmm. hill climbs or snow cross or anything. It's like, well, what's, the end goal or what's their plan or goals moving forward or like what's Textron going to do with them. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to like, I'm, it's hard because like in this, and I always compare like snowmobile industry to motocross industry. Like you look at supercross or motocross, how many guys change brands every year or two? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yep. honestly, like, or it's, and it's no big deal. No one gives a shit, but no. like at the snowmobile world, everyone's so passionate and uh, loyal to brands and it's, and I'll use her for an example. Like, he's full on. Like, his dad's been Arctic Cat, and they have a huge Arctic Cat collection and everything. But, and this is being honest, like, he could have won some more races probably on Polaris or something. Like, I mean, the Polaris sleds are fast right now, and they handle good. Yeah. So, and it's it, it's cool that he's not switching. Or and I mean, and I respect him for that too. But And I'm not saying that's the only reason I changed. But, like, it just... You always you don't want to say what if you know yeah mm-hmm. like, yep. and I and the Skidoo and Polaris and Arctic Cats are all good sleds I think and I've ridden them all in the mountains and I've ridden them in the tracks and the trails and everything and I think each one does things differently or betterly than the other and like it's too bad you can't have all three of them build one sled because it would be the <laughs> <laughs> it'd be unreal like yeah but so I think like I said I the day they fired Brian Dick was the day I was like sure. I was just bummed out and like he was the one always pushing for change like for race sleds and like well he was so so smart but then also so fast on a sled mm-hmm. to where his he he had that direction of like racing yep. and mm-hmm. then also engineering yep and like he was the guy that it was like involving Kirk or whatever in snowcross and like so I would just always I mean you get worried maybe like and someone like Cletty he could tell you Hey man, we're not doing, we're not going to not support racing and like this and that. But like, I mean, every year they're just like kind of whittling mm-hmm. back on him. Even it, he's only got so much control. Yeah. Like, like when, when we first went up to the, when we first started with Artie Cat, even us, yep. there was like Don up there and Kellen and yep. uh, the Whitware guy. And now it's just Mike up there. Like, yeah. I mean, and then like you got burbs and them working in there, but like if you don't have the support from the, factory it's harder to go win races yeah. like and if they're so uh i don't know what the word i'm looking at right now but like they're so under i don't know if it's staffed if but you know what i mean like they have so many people at the plant that can only do so many jobs and if those guys don't have any extra time to help you whether it be mapping or any of this stuff like mm-hmm. or gearing or clutching like if they ain't got the time to go build a mod sled, now you guys got these new catalyst mods and they can't even race the things because they don't get them, they can't get them running good. Like nope. that's, that's what I was trying to prevent is like, if I, if I can't go to a race and be confident that my sled is the fastest sled there to win, then what's the point of going? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's kind of, and I, like I said, I respect all those dudes like Corey and Zach and Brown and, Cletty that more than anyone like because they are um not changing or like it's not for lack of effort no I mean they put in the work but yeah. like you only can do so much by yourself like, yeah. mm-hmm. but that's I mean every brand is kind of they only can do so much but I just hopefully like they can get their sleds going a little better for next year and like I mean Herf's capable of winning mm-hmm. like there ain't no reason he can't win a race right now or I mean, if but everything's got to go right, and you got to have the support. So I hope that Articat will give them the support they need to go win races. Yeah. So, but for you to yeah for you to switch to Skidoo and then to Christian Christian Brothers was already kind of with Skidoo with yeah. Logan. I mean, it was a 
I mean, it's hard for anybody to not make that switch. Just no, cause. yeah, like, in Dwight, I mean, I was plan. I shouldn't say I was planning on it, but, like, when I first kind of was like, well, I, I mean, I called Polaris. I tried to call a regular junior, and I never figured anything out with him or nothing, but, like, I wanted to do the – I shouldn't say I wanted to do the Polaris thing, but, like, the Polaris thing would have been – they were put, they put so much time into the Sioux and everything. So I was mm. like, well, I could do that. And then like, that would be a good setup for that and cross country racing. But then, I, well, the first year I went to Skidoo too, though, they were looking for hill climb. Um, oh yeah. Mm. So that's kind of, and I was like, at that point I was like, you know, I'll just go out West and I'll go race hill climbs and I'm going to just do that for the next 10 years. And I'm going to try to win those. But when they signed me up for that, they said they wanted me to ride mountain sleds and race them. And uh, they have a good setup sled for that. But, like, me or you or you guys, like, or Zach or any of us, um, when you go from riding race sled your whole life to riding a mountain sled and trying to race it, like, mm. it's, like, not good. <laughs> mm-hmm. like I, and those guys are badass. Like, it side-hilling across frozen dirt and rocks and sagebrush. Like, the guys that are good on those players is, like, they're hard to beat. So it was not easy by any means. And like me trying to ride a mountain sled, like it would have took me two or three years of just doing that. Yeah. But then I came back and raced cross country too. So it's like now what I do when I, and even Garth, uh, he switched at the same time and we had kind of talked to each other about everything when it was happening. And like, we were on the same team and we still are or whatever, but like we weren't going to do it without one another either. Like, mm-hmm. but we were kind of just, and like that was kind of Kirk obviously is his uncle and like, there's like weird shit going on. And uh, I mean, when I go race the hill climbs now, I race snow cross sleds with wide front ends and stuff. Like I can't yeah. ride a mountain sled. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I can, I'll go in the woods with you and I'll go anywhere you'll, anyone else will go. Yeah. And like, but when it comes to racing around corners and jumps and stuff, I need a, like a race sled. Like, so and Gar's kind of the same way. Like we have to set our sleds, but he's the same age and everything. He's done it the same. So it's like, it's kind of, that was the plan with Skidoo is to do that. And then I kind of like hill climbing is fun, but it's not, I don't know. You don't ride much in it. Like yeah. you get 10 minutes in a weekend, mm-hmm. or 15 minutes. And you're not, you don't get to like race anybody. No. It's just yourself on mm-hmm. the clock. Yep. So you make one simple mistake and then that's like, that's where I struggle with it. Sometimes if I got to get second there, I'm like, Oh, I could have. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You're racing against the time. So it is kind of, Drive different nuts yeah mm-hmm. so like yeah that's but it's the screw people have been really good and like danny poirier and jf and uh jp and dak you like those dudes are i mean dak you used to work for Cat for a long time for teams and stuff and the other guys they're all from skidoo but uh they i mean they just want to win races mm-hmm. that's and they they all pay the same pretty much like it's not money or none of that stuff so but it does frustrate me, like, with the, pat, the like, you compare motorcycles to snowmills, and it's like, if someone changes, it's like the end of the world. No. That kind like, of, I've, I've, read, I've raced every brand. Yeah. So. I mean, but it's easy to get, like, you, the thing with snowmill world is you build such a, it's like a big family. Mm-hmm. Like, even, like. You guys could come into our trailer, and if you needed a bolt, we're going to help you. Or, like, yeah. we'll bring your sled yeah. into the trailer and help you get it going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah. and vice versa. Or, like, Kletty and them, I mean, if I ever need anything, I go over to their trailer. or mm-hmm. Like, I go eat lunch with them or whatever. Yeah. So, it's, like, mm-hmm. it's a big family. So, it's, like, but at the same time, it's good to have different brands, too. Yeah. So, like, and Dwight's pretty, I mean, I think Dwight and Logan or Stewart, they'll always have a race team, I think, until the, they, I don't know why they would ever quit. Like, they're so passionate about it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where they were like, well, we'll help you out and do whatever you want to do. Like, yeah. Mm. And there's no pressure. I mean, back in the day when I was racing snowcross, I just, there was maybe more pressure. But, like, now it's just, like, they just want to have fun doing it. If it ain't fun for them, then they don't. Like, he does not want stress. He has <laughs> Dwight and Stewart. <laughs> nice. Like, they have enough stress to deal with with yeah. their businesses. Like, them guys got so much going on, like, they would just want to have fun and go to the races mm-hmm. and hang out. So, like, I think just as long as they always have fun, they'll always support the racing, like, in the circuits. And, I mean, they sponsor all the circuits, the Sioux, mm-hmm. all this stuff. So And even uh, Gady, they even sp- sponsor yeah, I mean, Gady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He's they, got their, stick, mm-hmm. their sticker on his sled. Yep. So 
So they, I think it's cool. I mean, the Sioux, they sponsored like the fertilizer or the mo. What is that stuff they put on to melt the track sore? Oh, the. Yeah. Yep. Pneumonia or ammonia or whatever to, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Mag chloride, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, yeah. I think chloride. Yeah. yeah. But so they like, they'll help the circuits or like they help core a lot. I know. So uh, it's been good. And I mean, they've helped me since I was ever since I came out here. Like the first practice track I went to was Christian Brothers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Like uh, like last year, uh, Otter Tail, you yep. won pro stock. Yeah. I think that was for Skidoo's first pro stock win since Brian. I think. No, it was because uh, what's his name? Uh, Corey Davidson had won yeah. a couple. Oh, of yeah, in 2016. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He won Nato Wash and, yeah. and Pine Lake. And Pine Lake. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then uh, he almost won Park Rapids. Yep. Because he was, I think, a teen won it that year. Yeah, he teen tend. Um, yep. So, like, it's. It's hard to win in every sport or like every yeah, and that was category. I cracked my heat exchanger down there again. That was an early track. <laughs> Which one? The otter tail one that you won. Oh, because yeah. it was so narrow berms. and yeah. the berms were a three mm. foot, oh, four yeah. foot high. So, yeah, so for you to win that one, because it w- that one was another timed event, but yep. that was an early track to where you had to be you had to be on it. Yeah, the that whole time. That was a yeah, that was an interesting one. And then like, I remember I. I think I'd passed her f- pretty quick, and then uh, I just kind of fell into, a, like, a weird groove. And then, like, I got into a – like, I slowed down, and Herf was, like, p- trying to push me to go faster. And then, like, <laughs> I was kind of blocking him. And then I think in the fuel stop, he got ahead of me because our can was way slower than theirs. And then uh, – which seems to happen. I don't know a lot. I don't know. What <laughs> I think I got something going on there at NATO wash, but yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we just had a, we didn't do anything we were supposed to do that. that. And then uh, I got all fired up and like, I made up a bunch of time on it. So it was good, but that track was gnarly. Like you couldn't make a mistake really. Mm-hmm. One groove. I don't like those single groove tracks though. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. It's not very good racing. And it's sketchy, like good way to get hurt, especially when you lose your brakes or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the, I think that first race out on Saturday, I think somebody broke their collarbone. I think a junior oh, yeah. sport rider did. I think Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, that's. But they, that was just on how much snow they had on the lake. I mean, I was, was laughing at losing brakes because. Yeah, drags a brake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I lose my brakes at the hill climb, man. I don't. No. I'm an idiot. <laughs> spent more money on brake pads in my life than <laughs> most people spend on anything else. It's stupid, uh, but no, it's so I don't know. They're all good companies. I just that's just kind of what happened there. Yeah, but no, it was it was it's different. It's cool to see you on a different color because you're doing good on it too. So. Yeah, and I think we got a good setup, like ice racing and ditch racing, like the 500, the last couple of years they had it. I mean, we've had some issues, like simple stuff that, but you don't know the weak points of a sled until you do it. Mm-hmm. So like we fixed everything that's been a weak point for our racing style, but I mean, there's definitely been some speed for <coughs> those races, which, I mean, it was there for the f- Articats too, but it just... Yeah. Um, the Skidoo's a good sled, like, mm-hmm. and I, with the uh, sled up we had there and Jesse sled, I mean, he did good at those ice races this year, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, he really did. Uh, Looking yeah. at Pine Lake at, like, all your guys' setup and stuff like that, we talk about, like, rolling resistance and stuff. Yeah. The, your track is, like, a straight line from the drivers to the rear wheels. Yeah. It's, like, perfectly oh, yeah. straight. <laughs> and, like, none of the other brands, you can kind of see a little bit of yep. angle down there. <clears throat> looking at a skidoo, it's like you yep. can really notice it. When you can just working on a skidoo sled, you can pull the track and just free spin it. Like you can't oh, do that on a cat or players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like so there's I mean that's and that's the way they come from the plant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've done stuff too, but it's like they've got their drivetrain figured out. And like if you s I don't care who you are, even when I worked at Articat, you go to Snowmill, a skidoo and you go out and it's been sitting for three months and you can pull it one time or two times at the most and it starts right up and it's smooth, like it doesn't vibrate, like the quiet and comfort of them are pretty sweet. Like, so it's kind of like I, they got their drivetrain figured out mm-hmm. and like a suspension and everything. I mean, those things, I jumped on them and I'm just comfortable, like, and I don't get as fatigued riding yeah. them or 
They've they've definitely changed them since I had yeah. my skidoo in 2015. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the 121 that oh, we yeah. got. Yeah. They've definitely changed them. I can notice that. Mm. Yep. Because the one that we had in 2015 was not very good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. So and I and I and I honestly never rode leather sleds that much unless we were riding them at work. And I now they're getting them like they've kind of the steering. I think they're getting all that stuff dialed in a little better. And I mean they're a good all around sled. You can't say anything. Yeah. But I, all three of them are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of you can nitpick any, just like a Ford or a Chevy or anything. You can nitpick anything about mm-hmm. them all. Or, but they all do their things good, and uh, that's the thing is patents. The patents these companies make. Yeah, it prevents you from doing a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, that's kind of where you get. You only can do so much anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of one thing I was wanted to talk to you about was it. Roger Skyam come up with a lot of this stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> for like the modern snowmobile. Oh, yeah. If starting way back in the day, like your Mount Rushmore. So like nah. what we talked about earlier in the show was like having a, a Mount Rushmore of, yep, for the snowmobile industry. So like I'd change my mind on mine. Roger Skyam would definitely be up there for mine. Well, because when we talked about it before, we just did racers. Racers, yeah. yeah. We just did racers. But overall, Industry, Roger Scan for sure. Yeah. But like <clears throat> he invented like slide rail suspension. Yep. Like hand warmers and <laughs> leaf spring <laughs> suspension. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that a modern snowmobile is. So Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh and you I, get to talking about patents and stuff like that. It's all kind of just bullshit because they were doing it back in the day and then like oh. every brand just started doing it. You know? Yep. I'm not there's one thing, and I'm just using an example, but, like, the shot system they use on Skidoo's. Yeah. Arctic Cat, and I don't know when Skidoo first did it or if it Polaris ever did it, but I know the guys at Cat did that back, like, a long time mm-hmm. ago, and they never patented it or thought mm-hmm. anyone would want it, so they just pushed it away. Yeah. So it's like there's things that people do and try, whatever, whatever brand it is, but then it's the one person that decides, well, this is – like you can be ahead of your, I think like a snow hawk or something. Like they're just yeah, ahead yeah, of their time. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's like, it just depends on who does it. But like Roger, I mean, the things that he's done, and it's hard because like, I don't know the players guys as much or like Skidoo guys, the past that people as much. So there's probably those same dudes that are like Roger at those brands too that are yeah. like, whether it's a teen or, mm-hmm. I mean, or even now, there's still gnarly dudes at all those companies. So it's like, which, it's hard to, it'd be hard to, like, I don't know. And that's where you would not want to leave other people out of other brands. Because, yeah. like, we all know Arctic Cat dudes because yep. we're from this, or, like, been around this area. So you'd be like, oh, yeah, Kirk and uh, Roger. And, like, there'd be these, I don't know, it'd be hard to narrow it down to five. But um, there are other brands have definitely got those same dudes, like the dude that invented the Rev Snowmobile. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. So it's like each company's got like their own Mount Rushmore. I would mm. say. Um, bringing up the Snowhawk, I wrote down uh, what happened to the Arty Cat snow bike. Because you were, uh, yeah. were kind of there. You raced it. Yeah, I yeah. was there for the first. You, you got third place in Duluth. I yep. was there watching that race. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that was an interesting. I mean, they were just trying to shoot from the hip. Kind of, I think, and just, like, that's when the snow bike deal was, like, kind of wild for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, they shot from the hip, and they got, like, the Sherco bikes and then the Camso kit, and they were just trying to make it so it was legal to sell as a snowmobile. Because I think what the consumer or the, I think, like, Arctic Cat and Skidoo and everyone, they were afraid, like, um, the s- snow bikes were going to get, like, banned. But if you had it, like, certified as a snowmobile, oh. then you could have still sold them and, like, people could ride them on the trails because you're legally mm. not supposed to ride them on the trails. Yep. Mm. So, like, that's what they were – Cat was pushing for trying to get it. But there's so many things, like, to certify a snowmobile. Like, I'm just using examples. But there's a ton of them. But, like, you can't touch moving parts when you're sitting on it. Or you can't touch hot parts. Like, oh, mm, and des- sure. decibels sure. and, like, longevity. Like, you can't just – throw something out there that's only going to last 20 hours on the motor and then need rebuild. Yeah. So like they were trying to get it so you could sell it as a snowmobile and then it would be last long enough to not just be a turd. Yeah. So like it worked good and it was like the circle bike and everything was good, but it was like not quite, I don't know, just with what 
they had too much other stuff going on with mountain sleds. And that's like when they were trying to do the stuff with the new sled. And mm-hmm. so there's just too many different directions and not enough people. And I mean, you don't really, like out West you see snow bikes, but it's not like you snow mills. Snow mill mm-hmm. really yeah. You don't thing. see any snow bikes around here. No. <laughs> right. And like the snow bike got big for racing and stuff there for a bit, but now, I mean, I, I think, think there's only four or five of them this weekend in Duluth. Yeah. So, so it's, but they were, there when it was big, I mean, those guys were hauling ass on them. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I remember the first, when they said I could race it at Duluth, I put a wheel on the front and I started riding around the, the snow crash track we had there in the dirt. And like <laughs> every day I'd break something different. Like <laughs> it was just, and then like we went in, yeah, I just went racing it. And then I went to like the snow bike races with it and it was okay. But then like just always breaking stuff. Cause like you'd fix one thing and then the next thing would break and is like a never-ending cycle yeah. and the the other guys were spe- like those yamahas and stuff horsepower wise weren't even mm-hmm. close to what i was racing but it's fun but uh yeah so it's kind of one of those things it just got pushed to the side and yeah pr- short short lived <coughs> yeah yeah a like, short-lived mm-hmm. trend mm-hmm. there's like a trend yeah. that took over and it's like really are people really into these and yeah. then it just kind of died off it's like well it really didn't last mm-hmm. same with snowhawks yeah, yeah. Exactly. snowhawk i seen a poster of one yeah. at a salvage place i was like oh yeah those <laughs> things were real <laughs> that was a, that was a thing <laughs> that wasn't just a dream that was real no, <laughs> no they and it's almost like they were ahead of their time yeah yeah because yeah. if, like, yeah. if they would have been when the snow bike craze was mm-hmm. i think it would have they would have sold so many more of them. Taken off, yeah. That's the thing about a snow bike. They're so slow. Like, mm-hmm. like you want to, like, I in the mountains especially, like, everything's so slow up there. You want a turbo sled that, like, get mm-hmm. you moving, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so I don't know. They, <laughs> snow bikes have their place, but they're not my yeah. cup of tea. I, they're fun, but I'd rather ride a snowmobile. So. Huh. How long, how long have you been going for, Brody? Two hours, 40 minutes. <laughs> not bad <laughs> fly as fly huh yeah. we we said you'd keep we'd keep him here for an hour so <laughs> <laughs> just an hour <laughs> yeah yeah well i don't know i you got anything more for wes or you got anything for yeah, us yeah we didn't or? get into this mopar collection oh yeah I've yeah been, i wrote down more mopar and guns i've been mopar <laughs> and guns. scratching my neck over <laughs> here <laughs> for it. so oh yeah so you actually had you had a truck on the cover of diesel world magazine yeah one of Wes's <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah. 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 How did that? How the hell yeah. did that happen? Uh, is I like so my buddies in Denver. They have this truck shop, and my other buddy owns it now. But they still owned it together, and uh, like that was when like truck diesel stuff was big. Like, yeah. and I was young. Like, we had on all these twelve valves and mm-hmm. shit. And, like, we were just mm-hmm. Brian, stupid. Brian told me a story one time. <laughs> he had a seven three, and you had must have had a twelve valve or something. He said that underneath the dash, you had a before the twelve valve craze was huge or whatever, yeah. he said you'd pull the spring or something and it would oh, yeah. <laughs> put <laughs> some boost to it. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it was, so we I mean that was just it was like a new thing and I had this Dodge uh, dually and I put like it I wasted a lot of money on that thing. <laughs> it was a cool truck, like it was badass and like uh my buddies they always were getting trucks put in the diesel magazines and then they wanted a truck to do or whatever. And that truck, I had like full belt motor and all kinds of stuff. Like it was a cool truck and it was in there. It was cool. I mean, I, I don't know. It was just a daily driver for me. Like I was a young, <laughs> I was young and like just blowing every dime I had on it. Plus my dad was blowing some money on it too, but it's like, it's cool. And I, the truck thing, like, it, I don't know. It just kind of, you're always working on them. Yeah. Like, did you get any money for for your truck being on the cover? No, of the they magazine? don't give you shit. Like, no. Oh, oh really? Like a, I'll be damned. You know, like there's guys that dream about that shit. Yeah. So yeah. like they're just some. I shouldn't say rednecks, but like <laughs> I'm a re- I'm a redneck. <laughs> yeah. I got a. Yeah, they're shit. redneck. I'm a redneck. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. But like, there's dudes that like they put a they have cool trucks or like vehicles in general, and like for them to be on a magazine is badass. Like, yeah. So I was just like, ah, whatever. It's just a. It's just my daily truck I drove, but it, uh, I, like, I have a, some old 12 valves and shit still that I mess around with, mm-hmm. but it's like. Have you always been a Mopar? Uh, yeah. I mean, my dad's a Mopar dude. So, yeah. like, I think any, uh, like, you guys are the same way, whatever your dad grows up like in, mm-hmm. you know, you're around. But oh, yeah. No. Really? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. My dad always hated Mustangs, and then. Really? Yeah. I'm a fucking Mustang guy. <laughs> <laughs> you just like running into crowds. 
just plowing people. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I grew up, well, when I was, yeah, 12 years old, I got yep. a job at a shop, and then they were board guys, so oh, yeah. I, oh. it got pushed on me. Sure. You know? <laughs> oh, that's, but they're, they're all cool. I mean, yeah. I, I have a Mustang, because my grandpa liked Mustang, so we fixed up a 65 Fastback, yep. and uh, I don't ever drive it or nothing, it just sits, but like, I'll never get rid of it because it's sentimental, but uh, I like the Chevelles and the Camaros. Yeah. They're cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. like the Chevelles a lot. Yeah, like they're bad. And I like but. the pre-70 mostly. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Cudas and Challengers were cool after until yeah. like 74, but like all the shit after that was like, yeah, looked like a fucking sucker fish yeah. and like yep. long, like weird, yeah. not proportional. Mm-hmm. But like the muscle car era was. Yeah, you got, uh, what do you got? You got a 68 Charger? Yeah, we like we have some. Like Chargers, Super Bs, Road Bunners, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I heard you got a hell of a collection. Yeah, we have, me, between me and my dad, we yeah. have like some cool stuff. And like, I don't get it. When I was living in Thief and there wasn't as much to do in the spring or summer than I would, and I was just working, I would fix one up like every year or whatever. But now I haven't touched them for a couple of years where hopefully next year me and my dad could do like a Super B together. Or something. Yeah. But yeah. like, need, the hard part is always finding someone to paint them or mm. like, you know what I mean? Like, now you got to hook up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, Jake. Yeah. yeah. If you, yeah. Ever want, if you want to paint one, I'll bring it out next week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next oh, week. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, and like, so that's kind of, I have, or between me and I had, we have some more we need to fix up. But like our car, like out west, they don't, they're not rusty. Yeah. Like, and right, there's yeah. no mm-hmm. fucking dents. All the metal in them. on them is like, good. You could basically, like the ones we have that need fixed up, you could, Blast them and paint them. You wouldn't even hardly need, like, you need to do a little body, but not yeah. much. Yeah. So that's pretty fortunate. And then, uh, but I love cars and like Harleys and shit like that. And mm-hmm. Like, guns <laughs> are cool too, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> guns are awesome. <laughs> yeah. If, if I had, if I was a millionaire, that's all I'd do is just do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, yeah, you would never run out of stuff to buy no. or try out and sell and, no. and test. And I'd have a tire machine in my shop and I'd just burn tires off. <laughs> <laughs> burn tires and shoot guns yeah, into the air. <laughs> while I was getting my tires changed, I'd go outside and shoot guns. <laughs> <laughs> I'd try a, a tank and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> no, I, Mopars are cool. Like I said, I, get into them i i like the mopars more than a lot of stuff i i need to find a d100 two-wheel drive yeah. standard cap short bed that's the one thing i don't have yet that i want but i kind of passed on some that have came up and yeah. i didn't have the money at the time so i was just like ah and then now when whenever you do have the money for something you're just like ah but then you spend then it on you don't something. have the time yeah. to work yeah. on it or something yeah too so uh, most most people's you know, Brian's an LS guy, and yeah. everybody around here is LS fucking yeah. freaks. But what's your, you thinking five seven? Um, I mean, I'd like to put a Hellcat motor in yeah. like an old car, <laughs> but like, I think that the badass. Like, I wish I was a Chevy guy because like their parts are way cheaper. Yeah, like yeah. I, <laughs> I could sell all my shit and buy f- twice as many cars. So it's yeah. like, I think the LS and like there's all these turbo kits and everything for like. Uh, what Deardall's got for his car, yeah, like, yeah. you get it a third, I'd say it's a probably a third or half of the price of yeah. Mopar stuff. Yeah. And like, Ford stuff's in between Mopar and Chevy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but I, I don't know. I mean, what's that name, that uh, Whistling Diesel? He put a Chevy twin turbo thing in a Charger. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that one. But that thing's nuts. Like, it'd be kind of cool to do that. But at the same time, like, my dad would probably disown me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, like, and that guy, that guy has more money than he knows what to do with yeah. now. Yeah, so he's just just throwing it at whatever he can come hell, up with. The Hellcat stuff is just too well, electronic. I yeah, think. It's, you know. Yeah, I mean it's exactly like so. Then you're it'd be cool to have like an LS or something that you could. It's pretty bare bones, like with a sniper Holly sniper yep. kit on it or something. Or yep. I don't know. I don't keep up on enough of this stuff to know what it is. But it, <laughs> you could have some pretty cool stuff with a Jeep. We had. It's we have a Chevy. My dad, it's a Camaro, a newer one, but it just gets. It's not really nothing fancy. It's just, <laughs> just drive it to Denver every once in a while. <laughs> hope I don't get a speeding ticket or pulled over. But yeah, yep. can't, can't buy a Corvette because every old dude has one of those. But no, you wear New Balance. That's like, what I'm going like for. Kyle. I'm going for the C4 Corvette. 
Oh, like in jean shorts and New Balance, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and a polo just, shirt. Yeah, and then I'll just <laughs> fucking trailer the old RM with the Corvette and <laughs> up the Brooks, and just put a hitch thing on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That'd I'll be funny. Put a couple heaters in up at Brooks and head home for the day. <laughs> You're gonna smoke heaters or ride laps? <laughs> oh, both, <laughs> both. <laughs> in between, in between heats, I'll just fucking light one up. Oh yeah, it's yeah. uh, funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's so it's cool. I like all that stuff. If you guys ever want to have some fun, you come out there and I'll show you some cool stuff. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. I've always wanted to go down to Colorado and go car hunting because they're oh yeah clean down there, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's you spend a little more money, but like the amount of time you put in, you know how it is. Yeah, I mean, you guys see it hand, firsthand, but mm-hmm. like if you start out with something but shit, it's like it sucks. Fuck, You're yeah. doing <laughs> everything. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> so. It's cool though. I love old cars and stuff. Maybe one day when I'm older, I'll have more time to mess with them. But <laughs> uh, tell then we'll just ride snowmobiles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh? No, I went through my whole list. Mm-hmm. You got anything, Brody? Any gun questions? Gun? I don't or know. What What's do you your, use for elk hunting? I don't. I, I don't hunt. I don't elk hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Oh, well, he's yeah. True. Yeah, you don't use a bow, obviously. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just gonna ask, what's your favorite type of gun you own? What's your favorite gun? Uh, we can't talk about that. <laughs> no, okay. <All> right. <laughs> what, what's your favorite gun you own? Yeah, what's your my favorite? favorite gun that I own is my uh, CMMG uh, MK47 Mutant. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's like an AR, but yep. it shoots, you know, AK mags yep. in the 762 by 39. That's my favorite gun, just yeah. because <laughs> it's it's the weirdest looking thing. You'd never oh, see someone sure. own it. And yeah, yeah. No, that stuff's cool. Like, mm. I like a, I like assault rifles and stuff like that. I one day I'm. Somehow I'm gonna figure out a way to buy an M60 or something. Ooh, <laughs> hell yeah, that would be awesome. I don't M60 know. would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it's hard because like every gun's got their cool qualities or like oh, what yeah, you exactly. do with it. Like, but I, I don't know. It seems like I don't know. Fifty cows are cool too. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like but uh, just the percussion and stuff. Yep. Like we were the shock year, We were trying to sight in a new scope on mine and like. I was videoing my buddy from behind, and he was shooting, and it's just funny. Like, you watch the shockwave, mm-hmm. and then, like, his whole body and stuff. Like, and he's a big guy, so it's like, you're just laughing, and he's like, you want to shoot it? And, I'm, and I think I had the wrong rings on the scope because it was flexing each time mm. it would shoot. So, like, we weren't getting anywhere, but it was like, so I was just watching, and I was like, I don't want to shoot that thing. Like, you get it. <laughs> like, he's a good shooter, too. So I was like, you get it close, and then I'll start shooting it some more. But is uh, so that stuff's fun, but assault rifles are cool, or, like, this, some of that kind of like gangster guns or whatever, <laughs> get, like old school gangster guns. Yeah, though, but like know. a Tommy. Yeah, Tom, that kind yeah. of stuff is cool. You Just need to get an Uzi, oh, yeah. a mini Uzi. That would be uh, sweet. No, I don't know. If I was going something like that, I'd probably go like a like an MP5. Yeah, yeah, or a P90. Oh, yeah. The the bull pup, the top loading P90. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That 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 thing's just weird looking. I like weird stuff. Oh yeah, there's yeah. and there's a lot of those kind of guns now that like mm-hmm. they just look like a. I don't know. It's like fake almost. Yeah, like, uh-huh. it's like a sci-fi gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just mm-hmm. alien looking. Like, mm-hmm. why? I've never seen that gun before. And what kind of company is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah just some weird off-brand stuff. <laughs> they just made something <laughs> odd to maybe get a few eyes. And yeah, I I see them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, they they get a different crowd too, because like the, all the old dudes like they like, hate them. They 19, fucking hate them. Yeah, em. like my dad, he's like, ah, fuck that thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then like. But my dad's going out, and he'll be like, ah, 1911 or whatever, mm-hmm. like the classic shit. Yep. And then, like, the ARs. But then, like, the new, like, different younger kids are like, oh, that thing looks cool. Like, mm-hmm. I want to buy it just because. So I think they oh, do yeah. that to. True, yeah, it got like, me. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about revolvers, <laughs> yeah. you know, 357 Magnum. Like, I was just looking for, like, a cheap, shitty one. Oh, yeah. And then I saw the, the Chiapa Rhino. Oh, yeah. And. I always thought it was cool when it came out, but then I saw it in person. And it's like, I'm spending 1400 bucks on a pistol. <laughs> yep. Just like that. Like, it, all it took was one time seeing it. I thought it was so cool, and then other people hate them. Yep. And it's like, I freaking love that thing. Yeah. I just look at it, and it's like, yeah. oh, God, I can't believe I own this. It's- I always laugh. Like, remember when the Batman movie and the dude pulls out the long... <laughs> the <Joker>? Don't. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. That's yeah. like, it's just funny, like, things like that you remember. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, or like uh, at Off Grid, the first time I was there, I was looking at the wall of guns that they have. Oh, yeah. The one you know local gun shop, and there's a, a British Sten 
submachine okay, gun yeah, sitting yeah, on the wall. I'm yeah. like, you got one of those? And the, <laughs> and the guy was like, Brody, you're the only guy here that would ever point that gun out. Yeah, like, yeah, no yeah, one knows yeah, what that yeah, thing yeah. is. I'm like, yeah, that's like one of my favorite like submachine guns from history. Like it's a mm-hmm. grease gun, basically. They turned into a huh. side loading. I've seen pictures on those things. Yeah. They're cool. It's, it's just a s- simple side loaded, open bolt fired submachine gun. You yeah. the sights were just welded on. Yeah. You, you don't <laughs> even use them. It's, it's my favorite gun in Battlefield Five. <laughs> 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 Well, no, that's the thing. It's so odd. It's not even in video games. It, it's in Battlefield Five. Oh, I don't play Battlefield Five. Yeah. Huh. You're missing out. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, shit like that. I like just the odd stuff. Huh. No, that's cool. Well, Wes, we've kept you here for three, three hours, basically. Three hours. Yeah. Our, yeah. our longest podcast yet. Uh, yep. So. Yep. That doesn't seem like that long. It's fun to do this stuff. So. Oh hell yeah. 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 No, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure people will get a pretty good laugh out of it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, hopefully, you know. Oh, and, we, and we probably didn't even scratch the, sur- the surface of, of stories of, like, oh, hell no. racing right. stories. And yeah. Like, we said the same thing with Brian, too. Yeah. That it was, like... With literally everyone that we've talked to, it's, like, we could talk to for days on yeah. end. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to... It's hard to... Yeah, it's just... You could tell stories forever. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's it's good. Hopefully, keep doing more and keep around racing for a little bit here, at least, still, and... See how it goes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you got 40 plus to go for. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll quit before then. I'm 38, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two more years and yeah. then you're done. No, no, okay. I turned 39 in July. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. I I don't want to do it till I'm, I can't do it anymore, but at the same time, you got to. I don't know. My dad's 58, still having having fun. Like, yeah. You're, there's got to be, I guess, a point where you just like, your pro competitiveness kind yeah. of goes away and yeah. you're just kind of doing it for fun but mm-hmm. it'll be hard though for me being out west like yeah and then i don't i mean maybe i'll have kids one day but i'm sure it's fun for like your guys's dad because mm-hmm. he's there with the kids and stuff like i think then that point comes and that would be cool but yeah mm-hmm. at this point it's like ah i wouldn't go just to have fun like <laughs> yeah. maybe if it's close or it's yeah. like five minutes away but I'm not going to drive 1100 miles to go <laughs> <there>. <laughs> yeah. ride around and get beat by a bunch of dudes like but I'd rather, and it's hard because mountain riding is so fun out west. That yeah, it's one of I don't know. We'll see. I I always say I'm gonna be done, but then it's hard to quit. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah, see. he did win the fifty, you know, plus class at Pine Lake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, he's out there winning still, but. <laughs> At least or, someone in your family's winning there. Yeah, true. Yeah, he was the only one that <laughs> yeah. won and the yeah. only one that didn't crash all weekend. Yeah. Well, I won. I won the four forty race. Oh yeah, so true. Uh huh. So, yeah, uh, I won against Tate. Uh-huh. All right. Well, fair <clears throat> enough. Yeah. But true, he was the one that didn't crash all weekend. Yeah. Yeah. True. Nah, I'm just kidding. But it's cool that your dad does that. Or Shit, yeah. Like, I know. I want to. I want to enter my four stroke at the Sioux, like just for fun. And then just have him just go make a, a few laps in rookie practice just to say. He'd, See he'd, what he like or like even what he thinks about yeah, it. Yeah, just say mm-hmm. he did laps around the Sioux even. Just I thought that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Shit, he's a good enough rider. He can get on team. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd want to. Yeah, I don't think he'd, he'd want to either. No. He probably could yeah. do it. But just go out well, there Just him. go spin out 100 laps and then come back in. <laughs> 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 It'd be funny to see what he says afterwards because he doesn't say too much exciting anyways. Or, like, he doesn't get too fired up. Yeah. So it'd be yeah, just no. funny yeah. to see so what he said. Expe- yeah, for, like, rookie practice, for him to go out there, like, with just those two other guys, then he'd be comfortable mm-hmm. enough. But, like, to go out there with anybody else or, or like, what I have to do is go out there when for qualifying and jump on Catterett's sled I'd never ridden before and go try to do go fast on it. Like for two laps? He wouldn't be able to do that just because he wants to get comfortable on it. Mm-hmm. It's Which is sketch, sketchy as fuck is what we do. Well, the wall and everything. Like, yeah, there's a lot that going on there where it's like if it's if you're on a lake, it's a whole different deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the wall. Even this year, I at the beginning I was going slow. Like yeah, but you have no idea what your sled's gonna do. No, like, mm-hmm. it's just like ah, what the heck? What the ice conditions gonna be like? Or yeah, but that's pretty cool. Hmm. But yeah, well, thanks again, Wes, for yep. for doing this. So thanks for having me. Hopefully. Get some more wins, and we could do some more next year or something. But yeah. Heck yeah. Sure. Sounds awesome. So We'll see. Okay. Thanks again. Episode 27, Shop Talk Podcast. Yep. In the books. <laughs> yeah, you and your stupid jazz hands for the thumbnail. Every, every thumbnail, oh, it gets I'm it. not going to use those this time. So. <laughs> do it. No. no. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks again. See yep. you, everyone. <laughs>